This is Spartan 117. Anyone hear me? Over. Isolate that signal. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Welcome back to Finish the Fight, a Halo podcast. I'm your host, Jesse Reiners. And I'm your host, Alex Kendall. As always, we are on this month's bonus episode. And we are on bonus episode number 17, where we are ranking the vehicles in Halo. Yes, so we're going to go through pretty much all of the controllable vehicles and a couple that aren't controllable, but that you'll see in the campaigns. Mm -hmm. We are leaving out um, any major star cruisers, whether it's Covenant, Banished, UNSC, anything like that that's just a major ship. This is going to be most of your land, ground, vehicles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if we were, if we were to include and, all- and the air, the <laughs> air is there too. We're doing those. If we were to include all those like carriers and whatnot, it would be like a two or three part series at this point. And I don't, yeah. I don't know how you rank it except for like what you know in the lore about it. So mm-hmm. we're kind of going on a very arbitrary scale, which is which is the official way to do it. Obviously, Absolutely, obviously way to do it. But we're going to be doing a tier system. So we we obviously don't stick to any system at all. Um, but we're going to be doing a tier ranking. Yeah. So it's going to be S tier are like your top, you know, the cream of the crop, top of the top, tippity, toppity, tippity toop, as they say, the full, full verbatim. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, absolutely. Will be your, your your best vehicles. Then we have your, your your A through F ranking. F is why does this exist? Mm-hmm. Please leave. Here's the door. <laughs> uh, so, so we're going to be going through those. Um, and if we don't know a vehicle, uh, we'll kind of just talk between each other because I think we know most of these. Yeah, there's a few that so, Some I are read. Halo Wars exclusives yeah. that we're not 100% familiar with just because we've played it, but well, we also, haven't done it's, the names of them. It's hard to gauge because when you're in the first person setting and you like know the controls of this, yes. going to a RTS where obviously the controls are very different and it's more the point and click mm-hmm. navigation. So there's like kind of that odd ambiguity there. So here, here's our criteria that we'll immediately forget. Power coolness, speed, and how tidy the like little cup holder would be <laughs> depending on who's driving it. Yeah, and that's also even circumstantial because you may always get like the extra large, you may get a small. It just depends. What's I'm saying? Do, and you know what? There's those monsters out there that don't use lids. So when yeah. they're, they're going about sloshing about, getting uh. sticky Coke everywhere, the the soda kind, not the other kind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's a travesty. So so we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna make that rule right now. We're gonna immediately forget it, but we're gonna we're gonna stick with it as much as we can. And I'm gonna write down this piece of paper. So if you hear some scratching, some flipping, mm-hmm. uh, that is me taking official notes, officially on this journalistic notepad I have, uh, just so we know these results. And we'll give you that we'll give you a final result at the end. We'll put it on social for you so you can see our tier list. I made a tier list and tier list maker. It took me far too long. <laughs> I had to pull images for every single vehicle. So please go look at it. <laughs> so we'll have that going. But yeah, we'll, we'll start now. Um, we'll go vehicle to vehicle, and we'll each give an individual kind of grade for it. Mm-hmm. Let's dive right in, and we're starting with light vehicles. Yeah, so we'll go light, medium, heavy, massive, air, civilian I may have missed one, but I think that's our, our criteria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll start with the UNSC vehicles, starting with the AV-30 Kestrel. Now, the AV-30 Light Assault VTOL, more commonly known as the Kestrel, is a combat vehicle used by the United Nations Space Command, we're just going to say UNSC, manufactured by the Misraya Armory. Now, the first appearance was in the legendary... Halo Spartan Strike. So you know it is. <laughs> and the Kestrel hovers above the ground by three ducted air fans rather than using traditional wheels or treads. These fans allow the Kestrel to easily navigate narrow spaces and partake in acrobatic aerial maneuvers. Kind of sounds like you can just almost walk instead of using <laughs> this. <laughs> it's like what in the early 2000s when hovercrafts became like really, really trendy and everyone's doing that. Yeah, now, now I will say we'll continue on about some armaments of it, but. If you think VTOL and you're thinking kind of like modern day gaming, a lot of people know the VTOL from Grand Theft Auto V, um, which is basically the the transformer kind of plane slash hovercraft. Mm-hmm. So basically, like it, you switch the wings, you fly forward, or you flip them and you hover. Mm-hmm. That's how I think of VTOL. So this is a little different. This is like 
cyberpunk feedball. <laughs> the standard production model of the Kestrel is armed with a set of twin-linked GAU-10 slash A heavy auto cannons. Some experimental models are also armed with a pair of M302 rocket pods. Now, the Kestrel was originally an aircraft that was cut from Halo Combat, evolved at an early stage of the game's development, though the name remained in the game's code. Various pieces of concept art for the craft are shown on the Halo 2 Collector's Edition disc. Yeah, so this is a vehicle that we should have seen. We were potentially going to see in the first two games, and then eventually 343 resurrected it in Spartan Strike. Yeah, because that's it, it's what we're seeing is... Anything cut from Halo Combat of Alder 2, they're like, let's do it in spinoff games. Yeah. Bring it back in spinoff games. Yeah, just pull on that lore. <laughs> we'll, we'll go kind of fast with these because I think we need to, we got a lot to get through. Yes. Um, we don't want this to be a, a seven-parter. Honestly, for this, it was an interesting vehicle. You know, and we, we, won't, we won't take it in, in the gameplay aspect of it. Like I said, mm -hmm. we're going coolness, cup holder. If it has cup holders, too. If it has cup yeah, holders, if, how dirty they are. If. if. Like raw power and, and kind of... Is it feasible and is it usable? Like, like, mm -hmm. was it worth production line? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this on D then. D list for the Kestrel of VTOL. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably go. I'll probably go middle ground. Um, I'll probably get a C. Okay, um, okay. Just because it, it it seems like a decent vehicle. It's pretty neat. The coolness is up there. I mean, you know, when the babes see you flying your <laughs> your VTOL to the streets, they know it's up. However, cup holders I think would be at a minimum. And those fan blades, man, that's pretty loud. Yeah. I don't know if you could have jamming tunes. Well, it's but, like a motorcycle. You just got to blare it and be obnoxious with the people around you. Yeah, while also causing mini tornadoes everywhere <laughs> you go. So I'm going to say, like, right now, this is our my base. This is a C. It passed the average. It's doing okay because it is neat. Yeah. I, just, I just don't think it will really fill the other check marks in for me. Yeah, yeah. Next, we have our classic M274R Mongoose. Commonly known as the Mongoose, it's a UNSC light ground reconnaissance vehicle designed by AMG Transport Dynamics. We first saw it in the Starry Night trailer for Halo 3, so technically Halo 3 oh, is where we first okay, see it. Okay. Uh, the Mongoose is one of the fastest and most maneuverable ground vehicles in the UNSC arsenal. It's highly effective for reconnaissance, getting you around, going beep beep, you know the whole thing. <laughs> um, so it was actually originally supposed to be in Halo 2, but was canceled. They had a really cool prototype, but... It was just way too overpowered for Halo 2 at the time is basically mm -hmm. what they were saying is they couldn't balance it for multiplayer. And that's yeah, one of the big yeah. reasons they didn't include it. And that's where we later see the Gun Goose, which we'll talk about next, was that was also a Bungie original concept that 343 implemented because they were like, okay, it can be a reconnaissance vehicle, but what if you had to arm it? You know, like, What if you had to take it out mm -hmm. on the battlefield to actually use it? And that's kind of where it came to. And... Bungie later to balance it ended up stripping all of that and just doing that passenger seat so yeah, it could yeah. be a transport vehicle for it. Now, a mongoose. I mean, this is a, this is a classic guy. This is a little classic, classic. little classic pony boy. You know, I'm gonna have to go. This is probably a a B pushing an A tierless vehicle. I agree, B for sure. Yeah, I, I think as long as especially two player. I think it's a great vehicle because mm -hmm. it's fast, especially for things like capture the flag or assault. Yeah. It's a great vehicle. Yeah. Now, now it does lose points uh, for cup holders. I don't think you're going to really find I mean, ATVs. I don't, I don't see any. No. I mean, you may have one on like your deluxe model for like civilian. Yeah. But, yeah. but combat one. Um, yeah. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go B on the Mongoose. I, th I think it is an excellent vehicle. But as far as armaments, obviously has nothing. Nothing yeah. to defend yourself. It is a quick boy. It's a fun boy, mm -hmm. but uh, but no cup holders. No cup holders. All right, uh, next up, what do we got? The M274M Gun Goose. Now, the Gun Goose variant was originally, as you said, going to be in Halo 2, but was cut. And years later, it was included in the multiplayer of the remaster of Halo 2, which is also its first and, I believe, only appearance. Yes. So, hmm, I'm going to say, actually, for granted, it's about everything we know about the Mongoose minus having some guns on there. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give this one a C. Really? Yeah, I don't, dude. The the aim is horrible for this because, of course, it is. If you're pointing forward, that's where mm -hmm. the shots go. Because I, I originally stupidly was like, oh, like a ghost, you can kind of aim yeah. your shots, and you're like, that's not the case whatsoever. Which, which, which I do like they did that because the the armaments are basically two mounted grenade launchers, which we eventually get in the Halo universe. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's basically slapping those in the front 
and kind of rigging it for armament. Now, yeah. Okay, so you're going C, C list on that? C for me, my friend. I will still keep this in B. Like you said, it does lose points because uh, it is like a chop shop brute variant almost in a way where it's like mm-hmm. slap, slap. It doesn't look like that, but that's what it is. Yeah. Is, is you're slapping two grenade launchers on it. Just taping them on there. Yeah, just 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 got some real nice duct tape. Just slap, slap, boom, boom. Um, yeah, and we only see them in one game, and they're pretty annoying. Like, they're they're the dudes who overcompensate. This is what they would buy <laughs> if they went. This is that, uh, you know, the the lift kit for your truck. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty much what it is. I'm going to still keep it B, B list because uh, it is still, my boy, it's still a mongoose under... under the compensation, so I will still keep it in the B list. Yeah. All right, Jesse, since you uh, you just had a variant, let's jump into the next one. Uh, the next one is a classic, the M12 Chain Gun Warthog. Known across the Halo universe as the Chain Gun Warthog, or simply the Warthog, is one of many weaponized configurations of the UNSC's ubiquitous Warthog platform. Models fielded during the Insurrection and the Human Covenant War featured a turret-mounted M41 Vulcan or an M46 Vulcan, while some more modern post-war variants are armed with the M34A2 chain gun. I love the guy who has to give all the names to these and the numbers. <laughs> I like it. It would be fun to like be behind the scenes, like actually process like mm-hmm. the, the lines. Yeah, but the first appearance was in Halo The Fall of Reach, Remember the, the novel itself, and as the most common variant of the M12 force application vehicle, the M12 chain gun Warthog has been in service with the UNSC for over two centuries. They saw use throughout the insurrection and the Human Covenant War, and they would see action in almost every major battle of the war. Several chain gun Warthog models have been constructed in real life for various live action trailers and medias. The most famous of these is the Warthog constructed by Weta Workshop for Halo Landfall Mm -hmm. and later reused for Halo 4 Forward Onto Dawn. More recently, a Warthog replica was constructed for display at Halo Outpost Discovery, but also like the fans are making Warthogs yes. as well, which is so crazy. It's, it's kind of like the Jurassic Park Jeep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 people yeah. Running it around, having their own. Start it off. What do you got for me? I'm gonna give it a solid A. A. Yep. I lo- the Warthog is. It's pretty fun to drive, or it's fun to be the gunner. Either or. Yeah. Even if you're the passenger, if you get three people in the Warthog, it's great. And you got to think. Plenty of room for some jumbo sized drinks in the uh, cup I holders. Agree. I Absolutely. Agree. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go in S tier. I think this is a staple. Mm-hmm. This this is your pinnacle. You've got the coolness factor. I mean, it's already a cool vehicle. Red versus blue taught us that. <laughs> you know, why isn't it called the Puma? But you've you've got that aspect of it. Drinks galore, plus like jumbo hot dogs, plenty of room for chips. Just put just like a gallon in there, really. Yeah. I mean gallon milk, straw. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> See, I mean you have those aspects of it. Also, it's just a powerhouse. Mm-hmm. Um the chain gun's amazing. It's a fun vehicle just to drive around in. Uh, it's got whippy controls, which I think fit the Halo universe well. It's super easy to adapt to. I, you know, I, there's really not too much negatives of this first variation of the Warthog. Now, there are other variants from the Fall of Reach through Halo 3 that we do kind of kind of see mm-hmm. some adaptations. And like we said, change the, to the gun. But for the most part, it's been the same somewhat model. Yeah, yeah. So so we've, we've, we've kept that aspect of it. So, yeah, I'm going to have to say it's definitely S tier for me. It, it, it's up there, the creme de la creme, top of the top, tippity tippity toop tip top, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> verbatim. Uh, verbatim. Uh, I'm going to start with that. But now we'll move over to the M12B, which is a variant. The M12B uh, is a military vehicle employed by the UNSC and a variant of the veteran M12 Warthog. It is infrequently employed later in the Halo Covenant War and became a predominant site in the post-war era. Now, this is our first... 343 look at it in Halo 4. Yeah, I remember this was a big deal when they revealed it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's introduced to be, you know, at least late 2552, pretty much after the war. It incorporated side compartments into the body, featuring a more angular body style, utility bars over the hood and around the bed, and several other largely cosmetic changes while keeping, you know, kind of the similar design. Mm-hmm. And then we also have it carrying, you know, several jerry cans, some like little ammo pockets, mm-hmm. and and fully changed kind of the look of it to be almost a more 2020 military vehicle and not a 2552. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, 
you know, with this one, it's still a warthog at heart, but I'm not a huge fan of the changes, and I think it definitely drove a little differently. Um, I mean, it's definitely a compensation vehicle. I'm going to have to say it. <laughs> three, four, three. Because now we have to add the cans on the back and the rails on and everything. So, I mean, it's 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 not much different, um, but I would probably drop this to an A tier just because it's not – that feel of the classic. It's not the look. Mm-hmm. They fully changed it to just be a Jeep kind of stripped down. Yeah, yeah. Like a with mo- a big ass gun on the end. Yeah. So I'm gonna drop that to an A tier for yeah. it. I'm dropping it to a B. B for you. B. You are you're pretty more you're a little more uh, scroogey with your with your thing. I like it. <laughs> oh no, just wait, just wait. All right. Just wait. I'm very interested in it. Uh what do we got next? Next we have the M twelve A one Rocket Warthog, and this is a light anti-armor vehicle, abbreviated as the M12A or the LAAV, LAV, and commonly referred to as the Rocket Warthog, and it's a UNSC ground vehicle. And it's also, you know, as we had said before, a variant of the M12 force application vehicle, and its first appearance was in Halo Combat Evolved for PC. Mm -hmm. Now, my personal one, I always thought it was Halo Reach, but actually it's Combat Evolved for PC. The M12A1 LAV is one of the UNSC's anti-armor vehicles designed quickly and efficiently to defeat lightly armored vehicles. Despite this, it was rarely employed in the Human Covenant War. Unlike the M12 variants, the M12A1 can be differentiated by its appearance. The M12A1's Rocket Warthog is painted in a black and yellow paint stripes lined throughout the base. Its seats are also yellow and its tires have a darker tone. And, you know, that are standard for the Warthog, which kind of cool color scheme already. Just going to throw that one out there. The M12A1 is equipped with a mounted M39 rocket turret, which fires three M19SC-HE rockets and requires four seconds to reload when the magazine is depleted. The Rocket Hog made its first uh, in-game appearance in, you know, as we had said, the... Halo Combat Evolved PC version multiplayer mode, and thus later included in the Halo Combat Evolved multiplayer component for the Master Chief Collection. Mm -hmm. Hmm. (laughs) What you thinking? What am I thinking? Uh, Now, this is not the Rocket Warthog you're thinking. I I, yes, yes, yes. And so I'm I'm familiar with it. I'm gonna have to go with a B still. A B on this one. Okay. B on this one. I'm gonna have to agree. I, you know, the, the changes we later see in the Reach one, mm-hmm. I think definitely definitely improve on this. I'm glad they included it. You know, it's it's got a bitch and paint job. Absolutely. I mean, we can say this. This is kind of like the Camaro, mm-hmm. like 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 that Bumblebee Camaro of Warthogs. Yeah. But to me, the Rocket Hog is is a neat novelty. Yeah. I don't think it's needed. I'm gonna have to agree on that one. That's a B for Bumblebee. <laughs> Next, we have the Gosshog. So the M12G1 Gosshog made its first appearance in Halo 2. It's a variant of our favorite little Warthog buddy, armed with a Goss cannon with the M68 serving as standard during the Human Covenant War and the M5555555 coming into use in the following years, the M555. The M5 so the Gosshog is one of the UNSC's anti-armor vehicles along with the Rocket Hog. You know, it's 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 there pretty much to target choppers, ghosts, some of those quicker, mm-hmm. speedy ones to kind of give that that blast to them. Um, and it's almost the same thing as that M12 chain warthog, except you just throw the Gauss cannon on it. Yeah, it's pretty identical. Yeah, and it fires a 25 millimeter hypersonic projectile by means of magnetic acceleration. So it's using that almost same tech that we see with those uh, Mac cannons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, S tier. S tier. I it's, absolutely agree. I, I fully agree. I, it's got it's it's the same warthog. You're just putting a better gun on it. Yeah, because it's a, a. I look at it like mainly you don't use it that much in the campaign, so I always look at it as like from the multiplayer. It's mm-hmm. just one shot kill. Yeah, and, and my thing going back to the chain warthog, that's like a '67 Corvette. It's classic. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's a real car, but it's a classic. <laughs> you know, you always keep it in the garage. It's got that like baby blue paint on it. One person on YouTube is going to comment and confirm whether or not it's a real car. Please do. Um, but then this one is like the updated version of it. Still a classic in its own right, but it's just better. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got those uh, those modern nuances to it. Mm-hmm. Like 40 years of nuances, but still. 
I agree. Now we have our next vehicle, which is the M12R Rocket Warhog. This is the the Halo Reach version. Mm-hmm. Now this is a light anti air vehicle. You know, as we said, it's it's people know it as the Rocket Warthog or the Missile Warthog, and it launches multiple M79 rockets. And its first appearance, as we had said, is in Halo Reach. Now the Rocket Hog is designed to quickly and efficiently defeat light armored vehicles such as the Revenant and the Ghost. But it differs from the basic M12 model by its armament. And yeah, it's, yeah, so basically the change from Combat Evolved to, to the mm-hmm. Reach one. Yeah, so it's launching multiple rockets, uh, which fires 65 millimeter Argent V rockets per volley every two to three seconds. And they're capable of achieving target lock on an aircraft, though they, can, they cannot lock on ground vehicles. Ooh, I'm still going to give this one a B. B I'm going to say, um, because I remember just in Reach, I honestly, it was one of the few things in Reach where I was like, just get rid of this. Like, campaign, <laughs> it, it will work um, yeah. on, that, on that normal mode. But yeah, like multiplayer and stuff, like you can't lock on to people. So if they can like run away from it quickly enough, it's pretty useless. Yeah, I'm gonna drop this to C tier. I, I think I think the coolness factor is okay. I mean, you're basically just slapping some anti air on the back of it. You're dropping it to C because that first appearance right there, oh, Halo yeah. Reach. <laughs> I mean, uh, no, I just think I think you're 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 taking what I think that Halo Combat Evolved did okay with mm-hmm. and changing it. I, I think the six rocket thing's interesting, um, but like you said, it's it's pretty useless if you're having any ground combat. You're just hoping one of those six rockets is on target because all you have is a reticle to point they're yeah, not all yeah. going to that reticle and they don't fire all at once it's yeah yeah so it's like you kind of hope for the best yeah so so i'm gonna put that c tier um i think i think once again uh also i'm doing a compensation rating as well uh, i think this vehicle <laughs> compensates a bit um you know the warthog i mean what's wrong with the goshog you know what i mean you know i, I get the anti-air aspect mm-hmm. of it you know you need six instead of one to take something down you need lock on you can't just use skill <laughs> so that that's what drops it for me. And wrapping up our hog fam, that's what it's called, <laughs> our hashtag hog fam, uh, we have the M831 Troop Transport Warthog. So it is a ground vehicle uh, that has the chassis of the M12, uh, just with no guns. Yeah. Uh, and our first appearance, funny enough, Halo Uprising. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Our little comic series with it. Uh, so it contains no armaments. Instead, it just has an extra tray with like a, a roll cage where mm-hmm. you're supposed to be able to put more troops. And... You know, unlike the variants, the spotlights are kind of on the top of the cage. So there's like spotlights all around. So you mm-hmm. can kind of like almost have it as a rescue vehicle as well. Uh, basically, just imagine every Jeep that goes mud. And <laughs> this, this vehicle. <laughs> and so a vehicle bearing resemblance to the M831 Troop Transport Hog was concepted actually by Marcus Leto during Halo 2's development. And that's where we get the variants of like the Snow Hog, the Jungle Hog. Uh, they were cut and we actually get those as the Goss warthog later so mm-hmm. he so there's a bunch yeah. of variants in there that eventually make their way in now now this is teetering on s tier for me uh one awesome paint jobs you can pick from 343 did the troop transport hog right this is true they did it right same thing with the other warthog that they have i don't approve of their design but like the rally hog great times here's the other thing you got a bunch of friends you got a lot of room you got a lot of room in the back. You can light stuff up. You can have beach parties. Plenty of room for cups. Uh, I mean, honestly, what else do you need from a vehicle? Now, it does lose points for no armaments, so there's really nothing you can do to defend yourself except for... <laughs> One rocket is a, a good a good kill streak for someone. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's any vehicle. Any any Warthog with a rocket, pff, done. But I'm saying you load this up with people. Oh, oh, you're right. You load this up with, with some Rockies? I think you're, I think you're in town. Hmm. Here's the other thing, too, you got to think about. In the game, you really can't use it unless, like, you load up Marines back there, so you can have Spartans back there. Yeah. But you get that fully loaded. I mean, that's 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 pretty good. I'm going to have to go with C tier. C tier on that one? Yeah. It Understandable just... from a real score? <laughs> <laughs> because it, it has no weapons, and, yeah, as I said, it's one rocket away from, like, all five or six people dying. Well, and, it's, and it's, it is utterly useless if you're <laughs> doing, like, if you could get into multiplayer... You can't do anything with it besides, like you said, potentially having like a Spartan laser or a rocket guy yeah, with it. Yeah, and you got to have people who are, uh, you know, masters of those weapons. Um, but my new grading scale of can it perform a, at a beach party, I'm going to go A tier. Okay. I, I At a beach party setting, I think this is the ideal vehicle. Yeah. Um, yeah, also, 
thinking on the cup holders, the coolness, the paint jobs. Also, just as a rescue vehicle, I think it's really cool to, mm -hmm. to get that out of the war side. I think it's a neat vehicle for for that. Once again, I'm, I'm a big fan of the hog line. So all of them, I think, have done pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I maybe have given out way too many A's uh, to begin with, but uh, we'll continue on. We'll continue. And the next thing that we're going to continue to, because we're done with the war dogs. Yes, the hogs are done. Is the M121 Jackrabbit. This is formally designated the M121 Light Strike Vehicle, but they're like, we need to call it an animal, so we're going to call mm -hmm. it the Jackrabbit. And it's a UNSC three-wheeled vehicle used by the UNSC as a scouting vehicle, and it features two front wheels and a centered back wheel. And the first appearance was in Halo Ground Command. Mm -hmm. It's a board game, right? That's the one where you like buy all the pieces, kind of like, mm -hmm. the, like you have to like measure it out and like do a campaign. Yeah, so that's like the uh, the board game, the ground board game, because there's also the the. It's like that Star space Wars one squadron or whatever the game is called. We buy a bunch of pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jackrabbit is a very fast scout vehicle designed for one pilot. While normally armed with a grenade launcher or machine gun, the Jackrabbit can also be equipped with an M68 Gauss cannon. When decelerating, the Jackrabbit's front splits into two separate wheels to form a tripod and retain stability. When bursts of speed are required, the two wheels pin together automatically. So we're kind of, I'm getting those uh, the Dark Knight vibes. Yep, yep. That's that's exactly <laughs> what I'm getting. Oh, this is this is a cool one, right? Um. That's gonna go for A for me. Yeah, th dude. The cool, like, here's the thing: no cup holder. I, I, I can forgive that because <laughs> you don't really need to be taking a drink in this because this is a quick guy. It's a quick. It's a, it's a jackrabbit. If you try to pull out your drink, it's just gonna go everywhere. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You probably just have a camel back on and you just have like a little sippy straw. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. I think A tier in this one. I may be too generous in a lot of these. Wait till we get to some of the other vehicles. But the jackrabbit's cool. Like the splitting tires that like transform when you like come to like a dead stop, like like in the Dark Knight motorcycle, like uh -huh, <laughs> yeah, like that's that's so cool. So I'm gonna have to go with that. Granted, we don't really see it that much, unfortunately. Um, I wish we had it in mainline games, like just zipping through tunnels and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be cool. Uh, but yeah, Jackrabbit, nonetheless. Halo Infinite, don't let us down. Now, next up. We have one I had to include just because it's so dumb. <laughs> we, we have the M552 Sandcap. It's a UNSC pickup truck. Uh, first appearance uh, was in real life for Halo 5 Guardians marketing. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The Ford F-150 is a real-world car. The Sandcat was uniquely customized with a UNSC theme by 343 Industries. According to Kiki Wolfkill, the Sandcat exists in the Halo canon as well. Imagine that in an interview, because like at that point, Kiki and like Frank O'Connor can kind of just dictate the lore. Mm -hmm. So it's an interview. She's just like, I'm going to make this canon. They're like, so what's with that? She's like, it's canon now. Yeah. And it was uh, designed by Galpin Autosports. And they had these modifications that just made it a souped up truck. Uh, the vehicle was displayed at several public events leading up to the launch of Halo 5 Guardians. <laughs> so, if we, boop. See, I'm just I'm just comparing this to a bunch of Halo weapons. It's it's an F. Yeah. It's, it's just a truck. There's yeah. It's got cup holders, but that's it. I mean, here's the thing. It is a souped up truck. It would be cool. Like beach parties would be pretty great with it. Oh man, that might change my score then. Yeah, this has beach party no, written all over. No, it. no. Okay, I got to okay. go light transport for that. I mean, okay. it's it's got the floodlights already. You could probably have a banging boom system in it. The, I mean, this is just a truck. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go F. I, I, saw, I was waiting for something else because it's just a truck. Yeah, nothing. I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna go F. Well, let's <laughs> let's continue on. We're we're now moving over to our Covenant vehicles. We are at the Covenant vehicles now, and we are at the Type 32 Ghost, and it's a rapid attack vehicle, more commonly identified as the Ghost by the UNSC, and it's the Covenant standard reconnaissance and rapid attack vehicle. And of course, its first appearance was in Combat Evolved. And it's a one-man gravity effect vehicle primarily used for reconnaissance and close infantry support or a rapid attack role. You know, it's known for being near silent, anti-gravity, and, it, you know, also it's propulsion system that makes it a super quick vehicle. Mm -hmm. The Type 32 is typically armed with two linked forward firing class two directed energy cannons. These directed energy weapons serve as the most powerful anti-infantry and anti-armor weapons, running on only a small power source, which 
I feel like we are being generous. I got to go with S on this one. S. Uh, S tier. It's, dude, it's fast. They improved it in the later games yes. to where the maneuverability is awesome. Like, it's definitely, I think it's a, you know, just even this base one. Mm-hmm. Total, total S. I, I'm going to have to mostly agree with that. I, I, I'm i going to give it, yeah, man, it's tough. It, it's a high A. It's a high A. It, high A? Okay. It, it loses a couple points because if you're going, I mean, if you're going equipped Warthog versus this, equipped Warthog beats it. But if you're going naked Warthog, there's just a driver. Mm-hmm. This obviously can can take that. Yeah. But I will have to dock points for, like, the first one. <laughs> Man, you're telling me I can't shoot and boost and I can't do this and I can't do that. <laughs> like, you did improve in your model. That's why you're getting an A. You didn't know. Yeah, because th- throughout the games, you know, they made it to where, like, when you're boosting and turning, yes. it was a lot easier. It was actually easier. maneuverable and yeah. made sense. And, like, you could turn more than five degrees while you're boosting. <laughs> and that's a generous number yeah. right there. Yeah. So I'm going to give it an A. Now, we are jumping over to the Type 54, which is basically 343's ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, so we first see it in Halo 5 Guardians. Um, and the, one of the big changes they did do was they reduced the amount you could boost. Mm-hmm. So there's like a percentage base on it had to recharge. Made sense, <laughs> but but lame logic. I I, I agree. I'm I'm gonna have to dock it. I'm gonna actually give this a C tier. I you know I want that infinite boost. I, I'm not a big fan of some of the cosmetic changes on it. Cosm- I, uh, yeah, it's rabbit. Or that's a whole separate discussion because the cosmetics were terrible. I'm gonna agree with you. C. Yeah. C is super bad. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's still past the grade. It's still it's still a ghost. I mean, it's still mm-hmm. the light maneuver vehicle we kind of know it as. Um, but I will dock some points on it uh, because, you know, they, they changed the... Basically, the, their thing was, oh, they had re- more reinforced shielding on the front to protect the driver, but it just made it kind of bulkier. And, mm, and, and you yeah. know, listen, if I want to go fast in my car, I'm not wearing my... I'm not wearing my, my seatbelt. <laughs> I'm just driving off that cliff. <laughs> no, so so the safety precautions, it, it's understandable from a design aspect, but from just like a halo aspect, I think it kind of changed a little too much. Yeah. Got to take it off. Yeah. And the next one we have is the Type 52 Prowler. It's an infantry support vehicle, uh, informally known by the UNSC as the Brute Prowler, but it's a Jero Hanai ground vehicle in its service with the Covenant. And first appearance was in Halo 3. First and only, right? First and only, yes. Mm -hmm. The Prowler seems to hover on gravity-assisted sled as the bottom incorporates a pair of metal runners with an anti-gravity projector running between them. A plasma turret is located in the front of the vehicle, and the driver sits in the rear of the vehicle, and the two passengers can... Uh, jump on either sides of the, the sleds, sleds. Yeah. yeah. And it was originally going to be called the Mauler, but then that was given to the Type 52 pistol. Mm-hmm. So this is basically, this is supposed to be the Brute Warthog. I'm going to go with a D on this one. A D. It, dude, it handles horribly. The turret, I it just like you're so high up and the, the aiming is kind of eh. Yeah, because it tried to be the Spectre. I mean, that's honestly what it tried to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like, the, the troop transport, but had a turret, like you said, the Warthog or the Spectre. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to agree. I mean, we only saw it once. I mean, it did have, like, that kind of Harley Davis. I mean, all the brute stuff has that Harley kind of vibe yeah, to it. Yeah, that biker gang kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but I agree. I mean, I th- it was just kind of a silly vehicle. It didn't handle well. Um, I, I, I'm going to have to give it a D list as well. Yeah, it's, a, it's just, I think mainly it's just driving, and there's no cup holders, so... Totally agree. Now, though, we are over to the Type 25 Chopper. So the Type 25 Rapid Assault Vehicle, the T-Rav, <laughs> as they call it. <laughs> you know, it's it's obviously under the employment of the Gerald Hane. First appearance was in Halo 3. The Brute Chopper is a heavily armored one-man assault vehicle kept aloft by a repulsor array on its rear seating and propelled by a massive pair of wheels, big old choppy chop wheels at the front. It's an anti-armor assault vehicle with powerful 35 millimeter auto cannons on either side. It is capable of short bursts of increased speed up to 120 kilometers per hour thanks to its boosted vents on the side of its wheel. What are you rating it? I'm gonna honestly go eight tier on this. Eight, really? Eight tier, I absolutely love the chopper. You know, it, it, it's, it's, that cool, just brutish, literally, vehicle in there that just dominates overall. Uh, the auto cannons can be a little misfiry depending on where you're, you're aiming it, but coolness factor's way up there. Um, you know they got a fat cup holder in the middle of that. You know they would. <laughs> this is the time of person that like would scrounge up a cup holder, yeah. put it in there. Um, 
be- beach party, no worries. Those choppy chop <laughs> wheels would get right through it. Ruin a kid's sandcastle, all good times there. Will not make it an S tier. It's just it won't reach it. I'm gonna have to go with C. A C tier. The tier-er. shooting, okay. I don't like it. the The only thing is, it looks cool, and that you can just plow through warthogs. Plow through pretty much everything. But, but yeah, so C tier for me, just because it's a it's a vehicle I gen I generally avoid. But the next vehicle we have, as you had just mentioned, is the Type 46 Spectre. And it's an infantry support vehicle, commonly known as the Spectre, and it's the Covenant's anti-infantry and transport vehicle. Now, its first appearance was in Halo 2, I think one of the only appearances. It really didn't see the light of day afterwards. And it utilizes a pair of boosted gravity propulsion drives for locomotion and features a sleek Bobos design. The driver is seated in a lightly armored station at the front of the vehicle, and a hatch provides limited protection to the driver's left and right sides, though the front is almost completely exposed. A single anti-gravity generator is mounted on either side of the vehicle behind the driver, and a single passenger seat is mounted above each anti-gravity generator, allowing two passengers to provide fire support. Its main armament is a class 1 light plasma cannon that is mounted above the forward thruster at the rear of the vehicle. And it does have a very high rate of fire, though the bolts often ricochet off their targets. Ooh, I'm going to have to go see on this one again. Totally agree. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, it, it's, yeah, it's just one of those things. I, I think it was phoned in. I think. It could have, if I think it just could have been balanced better, whether it was it moved around a little better. The design's kind of lame, kind of looks like a Transformers foot. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is this is kind of like the Prius of like the Covenant vehicles. Like, yeah, it's it's doing well with what it's doing, but it's ugly. <laughs> it's ugly and nerds drive it. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just doesn't fit. I'm the, kidding about that. It doesn't fit the criteria I want with it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I will say a vehicle next up that it's even lower on the list for me is the Type 48 Revenant. Ooh. So the Type 48 light assault gun carrier, the LAGK, more commonly known as the Revenant, is a Covenant mobile artillery vehicle manufactured by the merchants of Kikost. First appearance was in Halo Reach, and the Revenant is a lightly armored vehicle that is designed to provide artillery support for infantry forces. The original design of the Revenant was produced as a utility vehicle for Sangheili frontiersmen, who traveled the vast wilderness of Kikost's hunting preserves. The more you know. However, you know, as war kind of broke out, it started to become more of like a military police vehicle for them. Uh, it is armed with a class two medium plasma mortar that is implemented behind the operator. Uh, it's similar to kind of all the other plasma mortars. It's like a baby wraith mortar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wraith and a uh, ghost, yes. essentially. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give this D. Oh, I got it. Uh, dude, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum here. I am S tier all the way with this. S tier? I love the Revenant because it's, it, I love the Wraith. I love the Ghost. You put them together. It's super fast. It's Garbo. It's, it has a high rate of fire that's effective. The design is cool. So cool. I made a Lego version the of it. The design is cool. I love the design. Oh, my God. I love the design. And you know, it's got some sick ass cup holders. No, it doesn't. This is like the Prius XL. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is garbage. All right, so so this is one of those we are on the opposite this end is, of the this spectrum. Is, this is one where when you play above easy, that mortar does no damage to anything. Oh, that's not true. That is one thousand percent true. It doesn't do any damage. <sighs> it is trash. Why are you playing above easy anyways? <laughs> and when you're with, because this is the mission with Cat, and she's mm-hmm. like, drive this vehicle, and you're like, this sucks. I hate this thing. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Well, that that fortunately wraps up our light vehicle portion. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we stayed pretty true to each other for most of this. We obviously had had some disagreements, but that's um, fine. But hey, we're moving on to the medium vehicles. We'll start with the UNSC M9 Wolverine, the M9 main anti-aircraft tank, the MAT. Commonly referred to as the Wolverine, is a half-track anti-air vehicle used by the UNSC. is manufactured by the Ushaya Armory. First appearance was in Halo Wars. The Wolverine is designed for anti-air combat. It's not a tank in the traditional sense, rather using that half-track design, which enables it to operate in rough terrain. We see that in modern vehicles mm, through war yeah, as well. Yeah. Gets that tank moniker, obviously, because it's the kind of like this mainstay, obviously, mm-hmm. within Halo Wars. Um, and after serving in the insurrection, the Wolverine was used to great effect in the Human Covenant War, most probably during the military engagements on Harvest and various other planets. 
the Wolverine's primary armament is the M260 multiple launch rocket system, a development of the general support rocket systems that have served, you know, all these battle tanks and, and, and other things that fire multiple rockets throughout history with it. Yeah. The weapon possesses two pods of Argent 5 surface to air missiles that are located on either side of the driver and the gunner seats. The weapon can be upgraded with two additional smaller pods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say a B, B. primarily just because looks. I mean, I love the idea that Halo Wars took a lot of vehicles and kind of did like, what if they had a baby? Yeah. So B for me, I think it's cool. Obviously, you're going to have uh, an endless supply of cup holders. So, Well, I don't know about that. I mean, because you're going to have a lot of rockets in there. You're going to have to like take care of it um i'm gonna go c on this i think it's okay. i think it's gonna be okay the, it's gonna be like the baseline medium vehicle for me this is kind of where i'm gonna rate above mm -hmm. and above and below the wolverine but i'll go i'll go c list on that one yeah now the next one we have is the sp42 cobra and it is a main battle tank formerly special purpose 42 main battle tank commonly known as the cobra and it's a hybrid anti-material and anti-fortification vehicle used by the unsc it is manufactured by the Misraya Armory. First appearance, of course, was Halo Wars. Now, despite the Cobra's classification as a main battle tank, it is designated to be lightly armored, fast, and maneuverable. Unlike most tanks, the SP-42 uses six all-terrain wheels that enable impressive mobility even over rough terrain and are protected by pivoting front and rear wheel guards. So when it goes into lockdown mode, those two uh, rear wheels get retracted. Mm -hmm. Now, the Cobra is equipped with a pair of turret-mounted M66 30mm light railguns that fire high-density ferocious slugs. These slugs are twice the size of those used by the M68 Gauss Cannon and are designed to penetrate enemy armor using the sheer kinetic energy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <sighs> See, these are hard because this is the one where it's like, yeah, it's it's the the RTS, so it's kind of hard. I want to say high C for me. High C. You went B on the Wolverine and C on this. I did, and I stand by it, my friend. Interesting, because the Cobra is a better vehicle in the game. The Cobra is cool. Cobra Kyle, all the way, uh, some might say. <laughs> it's it's neat. Uh, it's it's obviously it has rooms for looks. I will say that. But basically, you can kind of take down anything with these cannons because as as you switch to your mount, you basically have these platforms that'll lower, lock you in place, give you that stability. Um, honestly, I'm thinking this pretty much as a fireworks machine. Like, think of this: you're at your beach, you're at your beach party, you need something to light up. It's a little dark. You got your fires going, which is nice. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. But what's a little color, a little splash? Boom! You get this guy in the hill, lock it down, lock it down, load up, basically goss rounds of fireworks, fire in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I'm impartial to fireworks, so I don't know. It's hard for me to really like get into. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a B, just because I mean that's the really only use you have as a fireworks <laughs> machine at this point. <laughs> um, so we'll stay B B tier on that one. Yeah. Uh, next up, we have the XRP12 Gremlin. So this is a combat support vehicle uh, that is used by the UNSC. It is used to hamper, interfere with, and disable enemy electronics in support of offensive operations. Obviously, a Halo Wars vehicle. If you ever hear anything like that. It features a six-wheel drive system, very similar. Yeah, kind of like our, our six-wheeled friend uh, we, we heard previously with the uh, Cobra. Uh, so it's the driver sits at the front of the vehicle, and instead of having a window, it's got this big one-way screen, kind of this big dome of, like, Mjolnir arm plate. It almost looks like Mjolnir faceplate mm -hmm. for it, like a big one. Uh, the weaponry is mounted on top of the vehicle, allowing it to target and fire more easily. The XRP-12 features no true armaments, but is equipped with that X-23 NN EMP cannon. You know, so that way it has to be protected because it's it's just a support vehicle to take out electronics. Mm -hmm. This for me, going on beach party looks, cup holders, coolness, maneuverability, and armaments, uh, it's an F tier for me. I'm going to say D just because it is ugly as hell. And it's just like a very mini, mini, mini base. Yeah. I mean, what's preventing it an F for you? Something. I don't, the only thing is that I do, as much as it's ugly, I like the front window. Everything else just I don't think goes with it. Because the front window looks like it should be like an air vehicle. It looks dumb. It looks dumb, but I mean, so, it's, does, it's like so a, does my dog Jake, and I love Jake. So Okay, well, okay, I agree with that then. It's like a cute dumb. 
Yeah, you and Jake, this vehicle, and a Dodge 1996 Caravan all have that in common. So. <laughs> that, that dumb, cute look. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do we got next? Well, next, we have the Hrunting Mark III Cyclops. Now, the, the Hrunting Mark III exoskeleton, also known as the Cyclops, is a bipedal-powered exoskeleton used in the UNSC. It is redesigned version of the Mark III exoskeleton, which is a predecessor to the Mjolnir-powered assault armor. The first appearance was in Halo The Flood slash Halo Wars. The Cyclops is a very large platform standing at 4.3 meters or 14.1 feet tall and 3.7 meters or 12.7 feet wide. The operator is harnessed within a sealed cockpit that features a transparent canopy and roll cage. Now the Cyclops most prominent feature is its two large arms. Same which feature powerful hand-like torque amplification gauntlets. And, you know, these can just easily crush through Covenant, which is kind of brutal if you think about it. They just walk up, grab them, and squeeze them. Now, it also uses its manipulators and various arm-mounted tools to repair vehicles and structures. And due to the Cyclops' nimble design, these repairs can be completed very quickly, even in the field. Hmm. This one, I I want to go with a C. Go with C on this one. Go and C, just because it's cool. But at the end of the day, like you have the Mjolnir armor, and yep. this was kind of like the crappy version of that. Yeah, I give this an F. Oh, okay. Um, so okay. yeah, like, like you said, it's it's the f- kind of first version of Mjolnir. Um, it's like a really bad knockoff of Alien. Yeah, th- that's literally yeah. Um, and and yeah, you can say it's maneuverable. You can say what? it does repairs, uh, but really, it's just a big dumb vehicle that I hate. <laughs> and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see. I just, for me, it's just lame. I don't like it. I can see you that. Should, you show up to a that. beach party in this stupid thing. Nah, get out. I'm of not here. gonna get a tan in that nerd. <laughs> Next, we have the Covenant vehicles. We will start with the Type 29 Shadow. The Type 29 Troop Transport Vehicle, also known as the Shadow, is a Covenant Ground Transport Vehicle. We first see it in Halo 2. The Shadow is a Troop Transport Vehicle, uh, very similar to human armored personal carriers. Mm -hmm. It is heavily armored and very slow. However, it possesses a powerful defensive plasma turret above the cabin, which can rotate 360 degrees to provide covering fire. The vehicle itself can be easily outmaneuvered by smaller vehicles, Warthog, Ghost, any of those vehicles that are there. So these are the vehicles we see in the underground highway Mm -hmm. in Halo 2 Mm -hmm. that we never really get to use or or, or, or play with, but you can kind of see what's going on with them. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go F. Yeah, I was going to say D or F. I'm going to say D just because there is a defense there. There is a defense. It's 360. Let's let's go here. What is your criteria? I I don't know what your criteria on rating these vehicles is now because I'm going by beach party and cup holders. Are you just going I'm by still turrets? going by everything else. So so you're getting a D just because it has a turret? Yeah, it would be an F, but because it does have some kind of defense that is useful sometimes. Well, okay. Hey, 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 listen. We can have opposite Listen, I'm, then I'm interested in this opinions. next one. I'm interested in what you're saying this next one. Let's okay, go. Okay. Let's go. The Covenant Cargo Tug. The Cargo Tug is a light transport craft of Covenant design, virtually identical in outward appearance to the Type 29 Shadow. It's nonetheless a distinct vehicle, most conspicuously distinguished by its flight capability. And it has, you know, like the Shadow, a small cargo capacity. You know, first appearance was Halo Escalation Issue 3. Mm-hmm. So I'm probably going to give it... The same. A D. Flying, to me, doesn't make it any cooler. I guess I can just kind of get away, but... What? It's so much cooler. I mean, I'm giving it a D as well. Because <laughs> it, goes, it goes from an F to a D. But honestly, I mean, flight makes it, man. If you're going out... How far up can it go, though? It goes towards atmosphere. It goes up to the ships. Okay. Well, If you read Escalation issue number three, you would know what happens with it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think... I think it's okay. It's still that same lame vehicle, but it can fly. Which it is obviously, ugly. it's it's ugly. It's it's like you took a Hershey's kiss, melted it, and kind of like tried to put it back together. <laughs> but it's still like mounted on the bottom. That's that's basically what it is. Uh, but we're moving on to something that's pretty neat. I, I I like this, and I I did keep out. I will say a lot of the banished vehicles, just because a lot of them didn't really pertain. Some were like boss vehicles. Like only the boss could yeah. use this. So I left that one out. Or if they were exactly the same, but just red, 
I left those out as well. So I kind of kept it more UNSC Covenant and the one Forerunner. Yeah. Uh, but we have the Methane Wagon, and it's a modified version of the Shadow. First appearance was in Halo Wars 2. The Methane Wagon is an unstable, slow, and rickety modified version of the Shadow created by Ungoy. It has a parking brake made of a chunk of wood. The, the methane will detonate <laughs> violently when its structural integrity is compromised due to the volatile infusion-enriched methane stored on it. The vehicle emits a methane aura, clouds of infused-enriched methane, that makes nearby Ungoy aggressive. The wagon can also catapult kegs of methane that release enriched gas clouds that infuse... So, like, basically it's like a, a transport vehicle, but also support in Halo Wars 2, but pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. I mean, this is the coolest of the shadows, I will say. Now, now, now picture this, beach party. Mm -hmm. Change that methane out for kegs of beer <laughs> that it can launch to patrons at the beach. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I'll, I mean, it's a party wagon. Yeah, I'll agree. I'll give it a, a B. A B for that one? I'll go for I'll go B. You also, just love the fact that the parking brake is made of a chunk of Dude, wood. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I think this is a great vehicle. I'm giving it a B as well. You know, I, I think Ungoys know how to party. You know, I, I really do. I mean, I yes, mean, absolutely. I mean, oh, absolutely. You think they need that methane to survive? Mm -mm. Oh, they're doing it to party. They're doing mm -mm. it to get by, baby. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, met methane wagon right up there with you, baby. All right, so let's move on. We're finished with our, our, our meaty vehicles. Uh, you know, we, we are smaller meaties, our meaty smalls. Uh, now we're on to <laughs> our heavies. Yeah, so let's start with the UNSC, and we're going to start out with the iconic M808 Scorpion. Yes, and we have a couple of these because I wanted to include the variants from different games mm -hmm. that included different mounted guns, different armaments, yes. along those lines. Yeah, so the main battle tank, commonly known as the Scorpion, is a UNSC mainline armored mobile weapons platform. It was originally manufactured by Chalib's Defense Solution until Archer and Security took claim following the Human Covenant War and the destruction of numerous CDS facilities on Meridian. So the 90 millimeter cannon can deliver devastating blow to all targets, whether it's infantry or armor. I mean, it's also got thick ceramic titanium armor that can withstand a hit uh, from a Covenant fuel rod cannon. Because, you know, is it you, you get this thing and it's just a powerhouse mm -hmm. through and through. The Scorpion's two-man crew severely limits the human casualties, along with its main offensive capabilities. One other man can man the tank's turret as a gunner. But yeah, so that was a general description of the, the M08. Let's go into some of the variants. Yes, because I think all of them, as far as I could tell, are variants within the games and books. Mm -hmm. Because the 808, as they drop them, they drop those 808s, <laughs> uh, has been in, in line like forever. So these are the yeah. variants that started... Pre-Human Covenant, and then Human Covenant War. Yeah. So the first one is the M808B, and it features a coaxial-mounted M23-1 machine gun, and it lacks a gunner compartment. And its first appearance was in Halo, the Fall of Reach. So since it's an M M808 and Heartbreaks, um, I'm going to have to give this one so a yeah, solid A. Okay. You going, you going A with the, the OG? A with the OG. I'm going to go C. Um, okay, I, I wasn't okay. a big fan of not having a gunner. Like I had, you have to man the guns and the tank. Yeah, You're firing I can, both I can of them. See that? I can um, see that. So I'm gonna have to go C on that rank for our first look at the tank. I wasn't a huge fan of the Scorpion when it first came out. Obviously, it's a powerhouse, like you said. Yeah. But I like the changes we're gonna see with the C. See with the C uh, coming up, mm -hmm. and so that is the Halo 3 version. Yes. Next up, we have the 808C, which is basically the Halo 3 version of the Scorpion, mm -hmm. which is kind of the one that I, I, I resonate with. I really enjoy getting the gunner, the different armaments, um, different reload rates, in my opinion, with it. And I like the design a bit better. Mm -hmm. It was a bit clunkier in the first two, and this is where you kind of streamlined it. You see more of those treads. It seemed more of like that really quick battle tank. Yeah. And so, like, with this one, I'm going to bring this one back up to its its needed A rank. What, yeah. would, what would you... Are you staying with A on Halo, this one? Or? Halo 3 might be S tier. S tier Let's on go one? with S tier, yeah, because you have the gunner and just for nostalgia reasons and obviously probably a few cup holders in there. Absolutely. At least one for, like, at least, like, a Red Bull. Not a monster. His cans are too big. Red Bull <laughs> cup holder, though. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. The next we have the M808 S Scorpion, and its first appearance was in Halo Wars 2, and this Scorpion is armed with a high-velocity cannon for engaging enemy vehicles and a medium machine gun for engaging enemy infantry. Unlike other variants, though, the M808S shows notable design differences, featuring a larger, broader turret housing its main cannon, similar to later M820 Scorpion, which succeeded the M808 in general service. Hmm... Since we had to change the design a little bit and unnecessarily, I'm going to go with B. B tier on that one? B tier. You know, I'm going to keep it an A. I actually like the Halo 5, Halo Wars 2, uh, Scorpion. I, nah, I don't. Oh, I that's, don't. that's a shame. I think, I think it maneuvers well. I think it's fun. I'm going to keep that one uh, an A tier. All right. Keep it up. I think we're being pretty generous, but I, I think it's good. Uh, so we're out of the Scorpos. Now we're on to the Grizzly. The M850 Grizzly, formerly known as the main battle tank, is an armored mobile weapons platform in service with the UNSC. It is developed by the Charlbus Defense Solutions, the manufacturer of the older and more common M808 Scorpion. First appearance we see is in Halo Wars. And the Grizzly is the heaviest armored vehicle in service with the UNSC and is usually deployed in situations that require devastating firepower and a resilient design in a single mobile package. So it shares a similar design to the Scorpion, but it's a big old chunky boy, and it's fitted with those you know, four treads, very similar to the Scorpion, but it has a fifth stationary tread in the back of the chassis, presumably for extra stabilization, because it's, it's a big boy. It's a big boy. And compared to the M808, the M850 MBT is more heavily armored due to its large profile. As with the Scorpion, the driver's access hatch is located in the center of the chassis in front of the turret. The Grizzly is protected by exceptionally thick, thick boy armor plating <laughs> that allows the tank to sustain large amounts of damage. You know, it can withstand everything the Scorpion can. Mm -hmm. The Grizzly is larger than the Scorpion. The latter reaches significantly higher speeds than the Grizzly's maximum speed of 69, oh yeah, kilometers <laughs> per hour. The turret is larger than the Scorpion and features a separate access hatch as it is designed to support two M310 120 millimeter smooth bore high velocity cannons. Oh. As opposed to the M512 90 millimeter cannon on the tank. The cannons can be outfitted with S1 canister shells, which produce a high explosive blast radius, increasing the weapon's lethality against all targets. The Grizzly's powerful cannons are capable of breaking through an opponent's shields and hull in a single strike. What, you, what are you thinking? I'm going to have to go with A. A tier on this that one? This thing's badass. This thing is badass. You're not wrong. I mean, you can't go wrong with 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 a, a thick boy. It, it's it's basically a double scorpion. Yeah, it's a double scorpion. I mean, I'm going to probably go S tier on this one. It is slower, um, but it's, it's the chonky boy of the UNSC. I mean, it's ripping treads of everything. Yeah. I really wish I would be able to man this one day, you know, like in an actual <laughs> game, like where I can, like, sit down and get those turrets going. But, hey, you know. We can dream. And next on our list is the M14 5D Rhino. It is a mobile artillery assault platform, or a MAP, commonly known as the Rhino. And it's an artillery tank used by the UNSC. It is unique among UNSC vehicles in its armament, because it has a plasma cannon that was reverse engineered from Covenant Technology. And the first appearance was Halo Wars. And the architecture of the Rhino is similar to the M808B or the M850, even sharing technology with the Scorpion. Though it is, so when its cannon is firing, you know, the it, legs come out and lock it down. The Rhino has titanium armor capable of shrugging off all but the heaviest attacks. And the Zeus cannon has a range of up to 100 kilometers. So let's rank this one. I, I want to say it's, I want to give it an A. An A tier on that one. Um, I mean, the Rhino's cool. Its name is Map. That's pretty neat. <laughs> I'm giving these tanks. I think I'm being too nice to these tanks. They're just so cool. Yeah, but I'm like trying to think of like beach goers. I think this is compensating <laughs> a little too much. Um, I'm gonna go like C tier on this one. Go C tier. Yeah, I mean it's cool because it does have plasma. That's kind of neat, but it's just it's just a little much. It's just a little much. All right. Next, we have the Hunting Yedrasil Mark IX Mantis. The Mark IX Armor Defense System, commonly known as the Mantis, is a powerful exoskeleton armored fighting vehicle used by the UNSC. It is derived, if tangentially, from the Hunting and Yedrasil team's earlier Mark I armor defense system. So it's basically this kind of like culmination of these different sword bases, basically. Yeah. That put this together. 
Uh, first appearance was in Halo The Thursday War. Standing roughly 20 feet tall and weighing over 5 metric tons, the Mantis is similar in appearance to the larger Mark II, which itself was the evolution of the other hunting project that we saw earlier on, the smaller version of it. Yeah. Though it lacks sheer firepower and durability of the 808 Scorpion, the Mantis is a far more maneuverable, requiring only one crew member, and is equipped with regenerating energy shields. The Mantis integrates many features seen in the Mjolnir powered assault armor, such as the neural interface link, compact fusion power plant, and shield jenny. The Mantis is capable of maximum speed of about 43 to 55 kilometers per hour. There's two primary versions of the Mantis weapon loadouts, both of which have anti-material machine guns on the right arm and a missile pod on the left. One variant has a large caliber cannon and surface-to-air missiles. The other version, a 22 millimeter heavy machine gun and surface-to-air 35 millimeter missiles. The Mantis does not currently feature modular hardpoints that allow armament swapping, so you can't like drop your hands, grab new hands, mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So it's kind of suited with what it is. The Mantis, the Mantis, the Mantis, the Mantis. Kind of cool. Is better than the the first version. Um, but me, man, it's clunky. Doesn't look cool. No, it's 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 one of the dumbest designs. Yeah, I mean, it, it does have good firepower, so I, I will give bonus points on that. Yeah. No point in couple. There's just one person in there. <laughs> You're not enjoying that time. Beach party, just a spooky nerd. <laughs> I don't like that. I'm going to give the Mantis a D. I'm going to go with C purely because of firepower, and that's in terms of, like, you just walking through people and mm -hmm. stomping on them, and when you get the, the rockets or the machine gun going – but yeah, design wise, it was like really the first thing we saw from three four three industries do on their own, and I was like, "This thing sucks. Mm -hmm. well, who designed this? A toddler?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it gets a C for me purely off of firepower because once you get in one, you can last for a minute, and as well as regenerative shields. But next on our list is the M four hundred Kodiak, and it is an eight wheeled siege vehicle that features a pivoting cannon, and the Kodiak can also lock itself down, similar to the Cobra. First appearance was in Halo Wars 2. Yeah, I mean, if you've played Halo Wars 2, you know this vehicle. You do an escort mission for it mm -hmm. um, where basically you lock it down. It has, and there's a quote in it. It's like, you know, the pilot's like, if you can see it, I can see it. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what are, you, what are you feeling on this one? Ooh, feeling a B. B, B tier. B. Um, I will upgrade this one a little bit to a C tier, mostly because this is a bigger firework cannon. You know, you can still use this uh, for your great beach parties, uh, sieging enemies, uh, and the design's not terrible. Yeah. You know, it's not that bad looking. Um, it's got a lockdown. Plenty of room for, like, interior design. So if you want to, like, bad boy that up, mm -hmm. like, I mean, you can do what you want. I mean, you can put posters in the walls. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of room in there. So, so I, I got to go with that. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Next up, we have the Covenant vehicles, and we're starting with the Type 26 Wraith. The Type 26 Assault Gun Carriage, nicknamed the Wraith, is the Covenant's main armored infantry support assault gun vehicle for ground engagements. First appearance is in Halo, the Fall of Reach. The Wraith is the primary armored ground vehicle of the Covenant, um, so you use it pretty much anti-infantry, anti-vehicle. We're going to have anti-air eventually, uh, but it has a 35-centimeter plasma mortar. The Wraith is also equipped with an anti-infantry plasma turret, and all Wraiths in service up to 2549 were equipped with two automated plasma cannons, while later models swap these for the extra passenger space so that they can run it themselves mm -hmm. and, and take them out. I mean, this is this is the OG. I mean, mm -hmm. th we get some variants going from, you know, CE, the books, to 4 that changed up a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, this is the Classico. You know, I'm going to have to go with probably an A tier, on, on the Wraith. A for sure. I agree. I, I love the Wraith. It's it's a powerhouse mm -hmm. through and through. Yep. Next, we have the Type 52 Anti-Air Wraith, as, as you had mentioned. And it is an anti-aircraft artillery, often referred to as the Anti-Air Wraith, and a specialized variant of the Type 26 Wraith tank. And its first appearance was in Halo 3. Now, the anti-air artillery is a variant of the Covenant Wraith tank, but it differs in its primary armament. While the standard type model is equipped with a plasma mortar, which is used mainly against slow-moving ground targets, the Type 52 model is equipped with two rapid-fire triple-barrel heavy fuel rod cannons as the main armament and is highly effective against nearby air targets as well as ground targets. Mm-hmm. What are feeling on this one? Man... It's it's pushing an S, but I think S is like the holy grail mm -hmm. of them. So I'm gonna go with A still. 
Very interesting. Very interesting. I'm going to give this a D. Really? I hate the anti-air wraith. Oh, I love the anti-air wraith. I think it's worthless. I think it's it's not a fun vehicle. I think it's just it's cool on some missions, I guess, but it's just <laughs> it's just kind of it's kind of a worthless vehicle that the the wraith itself would destroy. And it's just it's it's a weird paint job. It's not like you're you're. I, I like the paint job. It's awful. It's not the beautiful purple. Uh, agree um, to disagree, my yeah. friend. Get that one out of here. But the next up we have is the Type Fifty Eight Wraith. Uh, so this was the Halo Five Guardians edition of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the Type Fifty Eight is a lighter and more nimble successor to the traditional Wraith. Uh, the design is based on ancient St. Healy designs that are cheaper and easier to manufacture because um, this is after the war. We don't have those manufacturing plants that are necessarily mm-hmm. up. So the St. Healy are trying to like scrap what they can with the Jirohane and the Ongoy. Yeah. So this is basically where this comes from with St. Healy designs. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and slap a big old F on this one. F. I hate the design of this so much. You know, I mean, they they... They cheaped out. It's it's what happened. Yeah, you, you had a you had a nice model. It was heavier. You had a heavier chassis. I get that. It was the time. But now you're trying to scam consumers by going yeah, on that's... this lightweight acrylic that's on there. It's just silly. The paint's chipping off when you're looking at it. I mean, come on. Yeah, you're, it's, not, it's... Going, you're not going to a beach party in that. The salesman kind of like slaps the hood and something falls off. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah, that's a feature. <laughs> that's, that's, you can replace uh, parts whenever you want. Yes, it's so modular. Get that out of here. Next, we have the Type 30 Locust, which is a light excavation anti fortification platform. More commonly known as the Locust, is a quadrupedal covenant vehicle used for mining and combat purposes. First appearance was in Halo Wars. Now, the Locust is a smaller tank sized counterpart to the Scarab, which is a repurposed mining platform. It does not share the Scarab's like spiked feet, mm-hmm. though it is capable of using its legs to climb over obstacles in a similar manner to its larger cousin. So basically, it's like there are just like flat yeah. legs that it has. There's no like claws it can do or anything like that. And it does possess one rotating turret, which is very similar in appearance to the uh, Type 26 Banshee's cockpit. Mm -hmm. Now, the turret houses a single plasma cannon that fires a linear pink beam. And this beam is effective against ground and air targets and can outrange most of the uh, equivalent weapons. It also has a regenerative shield that is capable of protecting the vehicles from a limited amount of weapons fire. I'm gonna go with B on this one. B, uh, I do. I do like it's just a cute little mini. Mm. It's a cute little mini scarab. That's just me, and I think it, it is pretty good even in the game. It works well. Yeah, I'm gonna go F. Ah, uh, F stands for fracking, which is terrible. <laughs> um, and this is just a dumb converted vehicle. I mean, you're not showing up to the beach in this thing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is just a cobbled together piece of garbage machine that they went. Oh, time to fight in this. <laughs> so that's a big old F for me. All right. Next, we have the giant vehicles. So we're going to start the UNSC as usual. We have the M313 Elephant. The M313 Heavy Recovery Vehicle, commonly known as the Elephant, is a big old boy. Big old boy. <laughs> in the UNSC armament. Uh, it's referred to as the Behemoth Class Troop Transport, and it's one of the largest ground vehicles that the UNSC operates. Though, since the end of the Human Covenant War in 2552, it has been surpassed in size by the M510 Mammoth. We first see it in Halo 3. And the Elephant is a three-level vehicle, almost a mobile base in its own right, with the bottom level acting as a respawn area and multiplayer that opens out into a rear cargo tray. The second level is a walkway gantry accessed by a ramp that goes around the inside edge of the cargo bay and leads to the driver's cabin. The level is also where one can find the optional AIE 4 eight, six H heavy machine guns. The third level is small and elevated, situated beside the cockpit. This is where the main armament is found, which is the M41 Vulcan. Mm-hmm. You can also get some warthogs on there. You can get some some mongoose going about. Yeah. Uh, this is a super S tier vehicle for me. You know, I'm gonna agree just because of how cool it is. That's I mean so it's awesome. it's a mobile base and like do you I love when you play this is that battles will happen on it. Yeah. And, Sometimes you get the right match where it's like an unnamed rule. Don't shoot the driver. Just let the driver do his thing as all the battles go and, on. And it's on so it. great because you only see it in multiplayer. Yes. And it's only on one map and there's no purpose <laughs> for it. They just want to like here, play with this thing. Dude, it's so cool. Oh, I man, love it. As a party vehicle, it's great. It's big. Like it shows off. It shows off in all the right places. It's the party. It's the party. 
there's nothing that's like over the top. It's mm-hmm. all kind of mm-hmm. like base model stuff, but works well. You got like f- like mini fridges all around. You've got like a nice cocktail bar that's on the second level. <laughs> um, pe- people, if they bring their bike or if they're bringing their like ATV on the beach, can park it there. They can refuel, or if they're electric, charge right in the base itself. I mean, that's that's top tier <laughs> quality. I mean, everyone's your friend that night. Honestly, you could also convert that top part of the Vulcan is DJ booth. Exactly. Easy. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. The next we have is the M510 Mammoth, and this is a mobile anti-aircraft weapons platform, commonly known as the Mammoth, and is a heavy-wheeled vehicle used by the UNSC in the wake of the Human Covenant War. The weapon platform is currently the largest known terrestrial armored fighting vehicle employed by the UNSC, dwarfing even the similar Elephant. Now, its first appearance was in Halo 4, and it's nearly 70 meters in length, The Mammoth is a six-wheeled Siegeworks ultra-heavy vehicle that fulfills the dual roles of anti-aircraft and anti-warship weapons platform, and it is designed for the elimination of hostile vessels, weapons, and fortification in terrestrial and orbital positions. As with the Elephant, the Mammoth possesses an internal storage bay for smaller vehicles such as the Warthog and the Mongoose, which are normally stored via magnetic grapples running along the roof of the bay. The Mammoth sports a Mark... 2457 HRG mini Mac gun turret on the top side Mm -hmm. and has two large openings towards the back as well as two smaller ones near the vehicle's cockpit. It's generally painted in a camel brown scheme. So my only gripe with this is that you can't drive it but it is way too big. So I'm going to give it a B. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this is a daddy's money vehicle. <laughs> I mean, this this is like the elephant's like something you can work to afford. You know, you get a good line of credit on it. Uh, you could definitely bring the elephant to the party. Um, I'm going to agree. It's, it's a B tier. It's still a cool vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think it's amazing. I think it's one of my favorite designs for a mobile base that 343 implemented in their vehicles. Oh, it's great. I think it's so neat. I think it's well thought out. I love... Because the Covenant have a lot of this type of stuff. They can drop mm-hmm. vehicles off. I mean, yes, the UNSC has Pelicans. But that's the only time we ever see like vehicle drop offs. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, granted, we do see a carrier come in, drop off some tanks. But as far as like vehicles we can kind of play with or kind of see that are smaller can get are in smaller, and out. Yeah. This is really the only transport thing we see. I really mm-hmm. enjoy that. So um, you're giving that a B. I'm going to give it a B as well. Uh, like you said, it's a, it's a bit big and there's some frustrating things that do happen with the tank mm-hmm. um, or the, the platform itself. So yeah, B, B works for me as well. Next, we have the M650 Mastodon. So this is an armored personnel carrier, uh, commonly known as the Mastodon, that was first seen in Halo Wars 2. As an armored personnel carrier, Mastodons have large troop compartments that allow them to carry heavy infantry, such as several Spartans and Mjolnir-powered suits. Additionally, their protective armor shields them from most heavy weaponry. You know, you've got some Vulcans on it, passengers can fire their weapons through the APC's firing ports. However, their size makes the Mastodon difficult to deploy, and their lack of mobility is, you know, much less than the smaller troop carriers. So you're doing this to kind of get them to the battlefield and kind of drop them off, mm-hmm. and less so get them behind enemy lines or to the enemy. So the Warthog yeah. just the troop transport Warthog is just much more of that variant for it. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go with uh C. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to give it a C as well. It's still like a baseline, it's still a transport. It gets you to the beach. It's like the bus. Like yeah. You can take the bus to the beach. It's not going to get you all the way there. And it's public transport too. Yeah, it's not yeah. a cool party bus. Yeah, it's 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 getting you there, but if you're in a, a warthog, you can drive right on the beach. You can be mm-hmm. with your friends already <laughs> like you know, it's it's just kind of eh, it's all right. Yeah. But now we're on to Covenant heavy vehicles, starting with the Type 29 Scarab. And this is an ultra heavy sight excavator known as the Super Scarab. And it's a Covenant quadrupedal mining platform. And its first appearance was in Halo Wars. So this is that mission where really all you saw was the body and the head. Mm-hmm. And it had that like tracking beam. Uh, so, it, you know, as we said, it's a uh, site excavator deployed by the Covenant to reveal deeply buried Forerunner facilities and artifacts. And this Scarab has a limited combat utility as the vehicle cannot self-deploy and must be assembled on site due to the delicate components and sheer size. I'm going to go D on this one. Oh, okay. Interesting. I it Just because the fact that I love the Scarab, but this one is just like has one purpose really. And the fact that it's... It takes time to get it on the field because you have to assemble it. 
This is an F. You lose. This thing sucks. Well, it's still Scarab, so I like it just a little bit with that D. <laughs> but, 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 but no, it's, it's an F tier. It's just a mining laser. It still can kill you, though. There's still some combative uses for it's it. It's worthless. It's an F tier. All right. Next up, we have the Type 47A Scarab, which is known as the Protos. Mm -hmm. And this was first seen in Halo 2, also an F tier for me. This is your typical basket. Yeah, I mean, that's literally what some designers referred to it as from Bungie. They're just like, this design was horrible. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give it a C. It was interesting enough. Jesus. It was interesting enough. Dumb, 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 dumb. <laughs> All right, well, here, let's hear your S tier scarab. Come on. <laughs> Next, we have the Type 47B scarab, and this is the Deuteros Ultra Heavy Assault Platform. First appearance was in Halo Uprising and Halo 3. So, you know, we know th there was a lot of cosmetic changes mm -hmm. from the one in Halo 2 to Halo 3. Now you have that core that you can actually go to. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, as well as uh, that the turret on the top changed entirely. So now it's put in the back. So overall, I'm going to give this one S tier, baby. I love S tier. So that's such a dumb ranking, but I it. love the Scarab. It's one of my favorite vehicles. How? How? It's 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 such a janky vehicle. Oh, I love it. I love it, man. So much. It's one of my favorite. I this one's purely just cosmetic, and it's a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse. Other than having some weak legs, but that's fine. Some of us have weak legs. Mm -hmm. I'll give it an F tier as well. Ah, so so ah. F across the board. I think the Scarab is one of the worst designs that Bungie and Three for Three have done. Shame on you. I think it's. I'm not understanding how you convert a mining laser to look like that, but whatever. Shame on you. Next up, we have another F tier, which is the Type 58 <laughs> Harvester. So I'm just gonna skip this. Uh, we see it in Halo Four Spartan Ops. It's just a drill. Yeah, and it's like a bug-looking drill because it looks a lot more. It's it's yeah, it's the like super it. scarab. It's it's the base of the super scarab. It's the super scarab, but it's a drill. It's F. It's F tier. It's F. And you know what? Let's just say the same thing for the Type Fifty Five Kraken, which is like this this mobile platform that first appears in Halo Five Guardians. Yeah, it's, a, it's an ultra heavy siege tower, and it's essentially a sky fortress with three powerful grappler arms. Which yeah, I agree. They look like spaghetti noodles, but they lift up this entire fortress essentially and again it's just it's it's a base more than anything it's getting an f for me yeah i mean granted we did talk about mobile bases and things like that and i'm not i'm not giving it that based on being a base or or, or anything the design of it's just not good i'm not really understanding the purpose of a lot of it and it was just a weird design change and i get that's kind of like jewel umdama's changes to the covenant and kind yeah. of incorporating more forerunner aspects as far as the lore goes but as far as looks, taking you to the beach, coolness, paint jobs, pr like practicality of it, it's an F tier as well. I because mean, it's literally a Kraken. So if you take it to the beach, everyone's going to scream and run right. away. You know what? You're right. You, you're like, hey, I got the Kraken here. Oh, that's scary. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that at all. I already have a fear of open water. That's <laughs> not going to help. All right. Next up, we're moving to aerial vehicles. We start with the UNSC, as always, with the F-41 Broadsword. The F-41 Exoatmospheric Multi-Role Strike Fighter, also known as the Broadsword, is a VTOL as we know it, which is an atmospheric, exoatmospheric, which basically means it can work on planet side or work in space, which is a strike fighter produced by Miss Raya Armory and used by the UNSC, you know, as well as planetary defense forces. Like other UNSC aircraft, uh, it's named because it's got cool bladed wings. Yeah. It's a broad sword. First appearance was in Halo 4. The F-41 broadsword is a versatile and well-armed AX strike fighter, typically used to engage equal or superior enemy craft in low to zero G conditions. In in you know, as we know, being being a plane as planes do. It's exceptionally fast, um, and the firepower displayed is is that, if not better than some of the Covenant kind of equally engaged fighters. Mm -hmm. It's most predominantly used by the UNSC Air Force in suborbital dogfights. The Aviator class Mjolnir helmet is recommended for use by broadsword crew members. Uh, what do you think of the broadsword? What do you, how are you feeling broadswords, about that? Broadswords, I'm gonna go with B. Yeah, it, you always bring it in to just uh, take care of business. I think it's good. I, I think it, it's it's your working class mm -hmm. uh, uh, ship that that does really well. Um, it's your Tie Fighter. It's your Tie Fighter if you're on this end. Mm -hmm. It's your X Wing if you're over here. You know, I, I think it's kind of that equally like it's cool. 
it's not blowing me out of the water, but it's definitely better than above average. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm going to give it a B tier. Um, I mean, it, you know, you would be getting a lot of attention being a broadsword pilot at the beach party as well. <laughs> you can't bring it though. I mean, you know, so that's the issue. Just show up in your uniform and you're good. Yeah, you got you to use your, uh, you know, your aviator class Mjolnir helmet so that people know <laughs> you're a true pilot. Uh, next, we have the D-20 Heron, which is a UNSC atmospheric and space-heavy lift dropship. First appearance was in Halo Wars, and this is a very large and roughly square in shape vehicle featuring a protruding area at the front of the ship, which is most likely serves as the bridge. And it features four tilt engine, two mounted on uh, the opposite sides of the ship, and four conventional and rear mounted engines. The configuration always allows for easy maneuverability in space, such as among debris fields. Now, the Heron was originally intended to deploy the infrastructure required to begin and sustain humanity's colonization efforts, such as, you know, it was like a colony starter mm -hmm. unit. Uh, the necessities of the Human Covenant War, though, said, nah, you're just going to drop off bases yep. during a battle. I mean... I'm going to give this a B just because it's important. I mean, it looks dumb. It's just a giant box, but it's important. Why? Because it's dropping off the bases. It's starting the 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 process. It's the catalyst to get an established base. Mm, I'm going to give it a D tier. It was an F tier when I first wrote it, but thinking back, it is a cool party ship. <laughs> um, but it's it's only for like, but it's repurposed. I mean, it would just be something like. You don't like anything repurposed, do you? No, well, no. Going back to the scarab, it's dumb. It's such a dumb, clunky, <laughs> garbage design that three for three and Bungie were like, "Yeah, let's just put this stupid spider in the game." Sounds good. Love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of worthless. Uh, it has no armaments. Cup holders, sure. <laughs> the design is really bad. It's just a support vehicle that can be run by AI, but for some reason they have people on it. <laughs> Next up, we have the AV fourteen Hornet. The Hornet is a UNSC airborne assault vehicle. First appearance was in Halo Uprising. The AV-14 is a vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, so that's what VTOL stands for, that has been in service since the insurrection. Uh, the Hornet is an atmospheric craft and as such cannot be deployed by orbital vessels unless a ship rated for atmospheric entry can deliver it to the battlefield. It is easier for the Hornet to be deployed from an air base located on the surface than from a ship. What are you feeling about the Hornet? What's, what's, what's your thing on the Hornet? Um... I'm going to go with C on the Hornet. I'm neutral on that one. Okay. I like the Hornet. You know, we've only really ever seen it and uh, be able to drive it in Halo 3. Mm -hmm. I liked it, and I liked that they limited it because it does have only its specific moments. Outside of those missions, it doesn't really seem to fit anywhere else. Interesting. I'm going to give it an A tier. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Hornet is one of my favorite air vehicles, and it's a proper VTOL instead of just having, like, your stupid vertical lift stuff driving on the ground. Yeah. Uh, but the VTOL is great. Uh, it's it's a it's a party vehicle through and through. You got two, <laughs> you can have two wingmates, uh, which is awesome. It can honestly be a mobile aerial DJ booth, which that's kind of what I'm thinking of is what I need to go to the beach. Um, cup holders galore. I think the design is, is kind of what you think a VTOL should be. Gives you that thrust forward as well as hover thrust. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm definitely going to keep that at that A tier. But moving on from that, we mm -hmm. have the D77-TC Pelican. And I will say this. I wrap the Pelicans all up into one because you can't use them unless you're in Halo yeah. Wars. So outside of that, it, they're just the Pelican. There's been design changes and variations, but we'll kind of stick to just the Pelican in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a... Its name is applied to, as you had said, a series of tactical aerospace lifters operated by the UNSC Air Force and the Marines and the Navies. Now, its first appearance was in Halo The Fall of Reach. Now, the Pelican is an extremely versatile space-to-ground capable craft used by the UNSC, as well as being marketed towards law enforcement, security, and corporate civilian markets. Like, we saw the, the police Pelicans yeah. in Halo 3 ODST. In its role as a tactical aerospace lifter, the Pelican is mainly for pickup and transportation of personnel, vehicles, and equipment, though some variants are capable of serving the role of gunship. The UNSC also uses Pelicans as civilian vehicles for quick evacuation. It has been in service for over 50 years and is the primary tactical support aircraft of the UNSC. So, yeah, I mean, we, we know the Pelican is a staple mm -hmm. through and through all Halo games. I'm going to go with B. You can't drive it, but, I mean, it's it's useful. You can't drive it, like I've said. Um, uh, well, other, yeah. 
So you're wrong. So that's that's where I see your list is starting. <laughs> um, this is an S tier vehicle. This is S stands for staple. I mean, this this is a vehicle that through and through gets you through these missions. Obviously, you've seen it in every game. Drops off your vehicles, drops off troops, takes you away. I mean, you literally do a beach landing. Mm, yeah. Which is what you wanted a beach party. I mean, you can get people from all over with it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's a perfect vehicle. You're rating a Scarab an S and a Pelican a B. I see yes, you sir. lie because those are terrible <laughs> ratings. All right, next up, we have the YSS-1000 Sabre. The prototype anti-ship space plane, commonly known as a Sabre, is a highly classified planetary defense starfighter used by the UNSC. First appearance was in Halo Reach. The Sabre was designed to offer the UNSC a swift, versatile, and lethal defense interceptor that could engage Covenant forces in deep space and low orbit, preventing a bunch of stuff to attack. Uh, the Sabre is what you get to drive when you're out in space. Uh, it's an F for me. It's a D. You know, I, It's a D. I, it's cool that we have a space battle in the game. That's about as cool as it gets with that. Yeah, the vehicle itself, it just it was not fun to drive. The the combat that in that mission wasn't too terribly fun. So it's a D for me. Yeah, I mean it was also in Reach, uh, which is where <laughs> Halo died. So that's an F for me. But next we have the B sixty five short sword, which is a suborbital long range bomber and is an atmospheric strategic bomber produced by the Mizraya Armory. It is fielded by UNSC Air Force reserve units and was formerly operated by the Navy. Its first appearance was in Halo Wars. Now the short sword is similar in design to the long sword, though its airframe is less angular. The bomber features elongated primary wings as well as smaller winglets attached to the large boom apparatus at the rear of the fuselage. And, you know, the short sword is typically armed with conventional bombs for performing carpet bombing runs. Uh, so it, and it's got a hell of a payload when any of that happens. So for for rating this, mm -hmm. yeah, man, this one's hard because I really don't have too much of an opinion on it. So I am just going to go with C. Okay. I'm going to give it a D um, just because, I mean, it would have gotten an F, but if you swap those bombs out with, like, party favors, <laughs> you can kind of go over the beach. But it's it's kind of like that lame cousin of the longsword. Mm -hmm. Like, the longsword is like that staple plane that is inside and out, like, doing well. But then they come with a short sword for that just close aerial bombardment, mm -hmm. uh, which is also just a lame way to fight. You got to go fist yeah. and fist. So I'm, I'm going D on that one. Next up, we have the AV-22 Sparrowhawk, often called the Hawk. It's a VTOL attack aircraft in service with the UNSC. First appearance was in Halo Wars. So the Sparrowhawk is a formidable air-to-ground anti-tank plane, or VTOL, um, that is pretty much used to kind of fly around with your units. Uh, it's pretty much what we're seeing earlier, kind of with the Hornet. And what I don't like is that's a ripoff of the Hornet, in my opinion. <laughs> this gets a big old C tier. Big old C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna agree with that C. I think it's. I think it's okay. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a VTOL, and they're, and they're they're they work well in Halo War specifically. But as far as, once again, the criteria is we're going to recount them, which have never changed ever. <laughs> <laughs> Can it <laughs> sustain at a beach party? Does it have cup holders? Is it cool? Armaments? And probably another one is like, do you think that if you had to pick up snacks really quick, could it happen? Could it happen? Yeah. Could you get in and out with some snacks? Yeah, that's Probably tough for this uh, one. Yeah, probably tough. Maybe not for the Vulture, but we'll see. Hey, let's 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 see. Because we are going to talk about the AC220 Vulture. It's a heavy gunship used by the UNSC during the Human Covenant War, and it's the preferred aerial combat vehicle during the prolonged air and ground engagements, heavy fortified enemy strongholds. Mm -hmm. First appearance was in Halo Wars, and it's the largest combat aerodyne currently fielded by the UNSC, uh, and it's boasting its two twin medium... Uh, linkless feed auto cannons, two top mounted Argent V missile launchers, and two rows of four A74 silver vertical missile launchers and, and additional weapons. It's a, it's a powerhouse through and through. Mm -hmm. And it also carries a single Phoenix tactical missile. Now, w combined uh, with the Anvil and Argent missiles, are specifically tailored to unleash unified barrage on a given target. So a set it's, it's pretty much to wipe the shields out. Mm -hmm. If yeah, you need a yeah. Mac ground in or something, you can wipe yeah. the shields out with this and get get your your coverage into it. Yeah. So essentially, 
I'm going to go with B on this one. B. I think it, it's a powerhouse, and I, I do love the design. Now, here's where we disagree, because the Vulture is just a Pelican that ate a B. It's just uh, it's just a bloated, inflated pelican. That's fine. You gain some you gain some quarantine weight, man. Don't talk about bloating. No, 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 no. This isn't this isn't like this isn't like little love around the edges. <laughs> this was A to B, and now it's just too fluffy in the face. <laughs> that's the difference you got right there. I'm giving you a C though. That's a hell of a party plane right there. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about right there. Like you don't have to pick up snacks in it. It brings the snacks to you, just Great. like this next thing. This is this is might be a top tier ship right here which is the D-82 EST Darter. The Darter is a dropship used by the UNSC to deliver supplies, such as rations and munitions, to forward bases. It is similar in form and function to the Albatross, though it is smaller than the latter. First appearance is in Halo Wars, the Darter. Let me, let me, let me show you a picture of the Darter real quick. Let me, let me uh, live, on, live on cam that we don't have. <laughs> let me Just show you the Darter. It with Alex wearing this terrific 90s sweater right now. Thank you, it's perfect. Look at this bad boy. <laughs> Jeez, what is it? It looks like a sock. It's great. <laughs> so so for me, uh, this is an S-tier vehicle. S-tier? S-tier. S-tier. Yeah. First of all, if you're talking about the, oh, it helps in the battlefield, that's why I put the stupid flying fortress on there, this should be there too because this delivers munitions and supplies that are needed behind enemy lines in the forward lines to troops that need it. And it, the, the pilot is constantly risking their life to get this out to the troops. Everyone's risking their life to do something on the battlefield. But this has no armaments. They're literally just flying out. They can do nothing. They're just dropping stuff off and I'll, leaving. I'll give it a B for their service then. And you give, okay. Well, it's an S tier because it's a party. <laughs> it's, it, it's honestly there for the party, um, whether it's, it's to deliver supplies, drinks. Uh, you forgot your swimsuit at home? Boom, got one. <laughs> Fun fact. But now we have the UH-144 Falcon, mm -hmm. and it's a versatile multi-purpose utility helicopter used by the UNSC. Manufactured by Misraya Armory, the Falcon is used for troop transport and deployment as well as air-to-ground support. Its first appearance was in Halo, the Fall of Reach. And as we said, it's, it's versatile. It's a multi-purpose utility helicopter. It's, it's nimble like the Hornet, or this, it's swift like the Sparrowhawk. And it's exceptionally discreet. Mm -hmm. A pair of Falcons can easily and quickly transport a fully equipped infantry squad faster than any previous helicopter while providing overwhelming support fire in most weather conditions. The Falcon's hull is sturdy, able to easily shrug off small arms fire and even certain heavier attacks. I'm going to give this one an A. I give it an A as well. Um, I mean, even the look of it is fantastic. It's the perfect mix of like a helicopter plus the Hornet. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think they did really well with that. Um, I mean, plenty of room for, like I said, troop transport. Uh, Fortunate Sun is definitely playing on these speakers at 24-7. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just a really cool design, too. It, it, it's like they took a jet, like like uh, a jet, you know, a jet, <laughs> and, 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 and redesigned it to like have helicopter blades, mm -hmm, like yeah. the, the dualies on either side. I think it's really well done. Yeah, yeah. Agree. And next up, we have the GATL-1 Longsword. So similar to its broadsword cousin, this was those interceptors you see in like any of those space battles. Mm -hmm. It's been a staple in the UNSC pretty much from the beginning because we're seeing it in the fall of Reach. And this is atmospheric and exo-atmospheric, so very similar to the broadsword. Okay, so imagine this. Okay, I'm taking this back what my analogy was earlier. The broadsword is like that... Here's my Star Wars knowledge coming out. The good guy ship that is really big and bulky that looks like a Y, and it's like got bulbous. Y fighter? No, it's not a Y fighter. It's kind of like that, but it's like the big transporty thing or a Y fighter. I don't know. It's one of those dumb Star Wars ships. Anyway, I don't, I don't know Star Wars ships. That dumb, well. dumb, bulky Star Wars ship um, is that, and the long sword is like your X wing. Okay, so that's that's kind of what I picture it with. I don't even don't even get me started on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it an A. I like the long sword. I think they're an excellent fighter. I think they're kind of like the Blue Angels. They'll come and do cool passes at the beach if you want. Um, <laughs> so, eh, you know what? Never mind. B. Yeah, I was going to go with B. Yeah. B I, for sure. I take it back. B for but not that good. <laughs> but next we have the AV Wasp, and it is a VTOL aircraft in the service of the UNSC with specialized variants employed by the Office of Naval Intelligence. 
first appearance was in Halo 5 Guardians. And it has similarities with the Hornet, the Spyhawk, or the Sparrowhawk, mm -hmm. and even the Kestrel. And the aircraft features an integrated VTOL propulsion system that combines dual lift ducted fan engines pioneered by... I'll, I'll, just, I'll just stop you right there. What are you giving it? It's the same vehicle. What are you giving yeah. it? What, what am are you I, giving it? What am I giving it? I want to say, honestly, an A. I think it's a good vehicle. Okay, I give it a D. Ah, I, I, think it's I hate the Wasp. Ah, I think it's a great vehicle. I hate the Wasp. I, I think it's just taking on the designs that were already done, and it's like, here's the same thing, but <laughs> different. So I give it a D. Um, it's stealing designs. It's obviously copyright infringement um, <laughs> from that. Uh, so D all the way. Next, we have the Covenant ships. We have the start of the... We'll go through a couple of the Banshees and kind of their, their changes. But to start, we have the Type 26 Banshee, which is the OG that we saw in Halo The Fall of Reach. Obviously, a single pilot. Now, the differences, we have a couple differences between these. So, though the Type 26A and C variants leave the pilot partially exposed, the Type B is kind of like a fully encased one for it. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is kind of your, your, your start of the OG Banshees, which... Makes sense, but doesn't make sense because we're going to see Reach have their own Banshee, which is a later design. Fun fact. Uh, but yeah, so this is your OG Banshee that you're seeing from the fall of Reach kind of up until Reach and then up until Five Guardians. Mm -hmm. So so what are, you, what are you going? I mean, honestly, I'm going to go ahead. I'll give the OG Banshee a C. Uh, so I agree, C. I, I'm pretty neutral about it. And honestly, I've never been great with the Banshee. I'm not a big fan of the Banshee. And playing through Combat Evolved again when we played the Legendary, how clunky and bad flying oh, that is. Dude, it's horrible. And if you jump out more than three inches above the ground from it, you just die. <laughs> so I'm going to give that a C. You're lucky you didn't get a D, Banshee, for, for, <laughs> for Danshee. <laughs> but the, the next one we have is the Type 27 Banshee, uh, which is essentially Halo Reach's version mm -hmm. of it. You know, I said it's it's a little bit more enclosed and changes up how it flies. Uh, so I'm going to go with C I'm, as st I'm well. still keeping it C. I'll, I'll, still C. We'll probably see that across the board, honestly, because now we have the Type 54 Banshee, which appears in Halo Guardians. The difference between this is you start to see more of that design change from the Sangheili. Yeah, being cheapos. Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, I'm going to actually probably go D on this one. Once again, you're using cheap parts. It looks like a gross bug. <laughs> it's very much yeah. like the heretic-looking Banshee. Yeah. Like, I, I hated the design of that. Yeah, and that's, D. D, I'm going to follow your lead on that one. Yeah, I think We're that's going to go D. I think that's where we are. The, the Banshee's never been a vehicle I enjoyed, mm -hmm. just playing the game itself. And, I mean, what nerd shows up to a party... In the like, you drop off in your banshee. Like, <laughs> that's so gross. Uh, but our next one is the Type Fifty Six Lich, and this is the deployment platform T Fifty Six ground support slash ultra heavy vehicle. Its first appearance was in Halo Four, so it's the Co it's the Covenant's largest airborne deployment platform. Uh, and it boasts heavy armament, which is capable of mass deployments of up to 40 soldiers. Fun fact. Because of this, the UNSC encounters with liches have almost always resulted in total destruction of the UNSC ground forces, resulting in a lack of available information about the craft itself. So I do love that little thing where 343 is like, I really don't want to write about this. Let's just say there's not a lot of lore, because <laughs> anytime it shows up, it just ruins everything. Yeah. Uh, so really... What are you feeling? What are you feeling? I want to see a D. D. That's pretty good. I gave it an F. Um, it's F tier for sure. Yeah, I mean, it can deliver the troops, which is great to your party or to where you got to go. But it looks awful. Dude, it's like a, a purple teardrop. It's even worse than that. It's, it's, it looks like a teardrop that kind of got frozen with a bug in it. <laughs> and, and, it's, and there are variants of it I know. I just didn't include with that because it was like two different lich styles of it. And they're super minor. It's very minor, and it's just – it was meh. They're okay. It was meh. It was just a meh vehicle. Uh, but next we have a couple variations of this Spirit dropship. So we start with the Type 25 Spirit. Uh, which is designated the DX class dropship by the Covenant and commonly known as the Spirit. It's an infantry and logistical dropship uh, that is assembled by Treachery Assembly Forges. So this is your first one that you're seeing in the Halo Fall of Reach, which is the first fork mm -hmm. that we're seeing. Tuning fork. The tuning fork. Um, it has a personal base on the side. You all know it. You all love it or hate it. But I'm going to probably give the OG Spirit an A. 
I'm going to say B. I'm going to yeah. say B. And I, th- I still say that it's a good vehicle mm-hmm. through and through. When it shows up, it has enough firepower mm-hmm. to hold its own, drops off enough troops to turn the tide of a battle. It's a, it's a good vehicle. I thought it was an interesting design, too. That it was, yes, it, it was just this yes. weird gravitational field in the middle that kept it aloft and helped it fly. Um, while you had the troops on the outside with these these bay doors that opened, I thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Not very practical, but here's the thing: you're doing a beach party drop off. You got to have like some DJs come in, like in and out <laughs> real quick. Like that can almost be like VIP flight, which mm-hmm. I kind of like. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna stick with the A on 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 the OG drop uh, spirit. Yeah, and our next one is the Type 28 uh, spirit, which first appeared in Halo Wars, and really the only difference is that it has a gravity lift straight up into the cockpit. Allowing for you know quick retrieval, still still uh, a B for me. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go S on this one, um, mostly because like let's say the DJ is piloting it <laughs> and has to leave, can get like sucked up right like that that's like that's such a cool DJ entrance to like like your spirit or your yeah your spirit is like up there like hovering like those like like lights are going off like a 13 year old girl's bedroom just like got those like like strips uh-huh. everywhere. And then, but like the DJ just like walks under the cockpit and like throws his arms out, <laughs> and then gets like hovered up. That's pretty cool. So that's an S tier for sure. Uh, next, we have the Type Fifty Seven, uh, which is the Halo Five Guardians edition of it. Now this one's different. It includes a more streamlined profile, upgraded armor, uh, improved in atmosphere maneuverability, and faster troop transport. Um, so they're basically saying that the Huragox like helped. Change yeah. this one, yeah, and so this is kind of like if 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 the party kids became corporate, yeah, and they designed this. I mean, what are, what are you feeling? C. I hate the design, and that's just it's still getting a higher ranking because of its purpose. Yeah, I'm gonna, man, I'm gonna give it a D. I'm taking it low. I, I think I think it ruins the vibe. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, it's like one of those. It's like one of those like luxury cars, like a Lincoln, that comes out. Yeah. That, like no one who goes to the beach is gonna buy that. <laughs> like, what, what are you trying to do here? Uh, now we're gonna be running through the Phantoms. Mm-hmm. Why is a Halo War Four one first? Oh, well. starting with the Type Forty Four Phantom. Oh, because it, it went. Uh, it went by types. Like Forty Four became came before the four, the. 52. Oh, you know what it is? It's because 343 was like, it's it's seen later, but it's seen before because in Halo Halo 4, that's when like they're like scrambling to find stuff and they oh, find yeah. them. Oh, that makes sense. You know, so this we have this later model that's actually an earlier model. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's a troop carrier. First appearance was in Halo 4. We, we definitely know a lot about the Phantom. You know, it, it it's high speed maneuverability and firepower. You know, it can be an atmosphere, exo-atmosphere. It's a pretty universal and uh, it's a pretty universal vehicle. Uh, it's favored by the Covenant for its armor, resilience, and numerous environmental conditions. Due to these beneficial factors, the Type 44 Phantom became one of the most significant vehicles deployed by the Covenant during assaults of occupations of hostile sites. Yeah, like you said, this is an older model, but was first used in Halo 4 because that was kind of Jewel Umdama's forces was using this yeah. older tech that they found. Even though the 52, which we saw in Halo 2, is like the 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 current gen, but yeah. after the Human Covenant War, you, you kind of had to scrounge for materials. As mm-hmm. we as we see in Halo Five, when we get those janky, God, those dumbass looking ones. Yeah. Um. So, what are you feeling about the Halo Four Phantom? Halo Four probably, and this will stay the same for a while. Is probably it's S or A. Okay. Whoa. I'm gonna go with A. Going A on that one. Go with A. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a C. Um. I think it's I think it's kind of the base the base run of it. I mean, it does what it has to do. Gets out of there. Not a big fan of how the the older model looks. Um, I like some of the newer stuff, but we'll we'll talk about that with the Type Fifty Two Phantom, which was the Halo Two edition leading up through Halo Three. Now, mm-hmm. it was created, you know, it's kind of specifically in the first year of the Human Covenant War. So I think more armaments, mm-hmm. more more capabilities to transport troops in there. So I'm gonna bump my rating up to a B on this one. Okay. And how you feeling? You going? You staying with an A? Or you going out? Staying S? with A. Staying Stay with, with a. a. Okay. But then we have Halo Reach's version, which is the Phantom Gunboat, uh, which is more so. It's not actually Halo Reach's version. It was the first appearance, but 
it is the space version of it specifically. Mm-hmm. So we see that in that less than fun space mission. But uh, it's still it's used exclusively for space combat rather than troop transport. So it is straight up just a a space uh, assault vehicle more yeah. than anything else. And I'll give this one a C. A C. C. I went with F tier on this one. I, I think once again, it, it's it's a weird manufactured vehicle that's not used for its real purpose on it. Yeah. It's just thrown some stuff onto it that's easily destroyed. Mm. It's a huge target for the already nimble space combat that's out there. Yeah. So I think it's just cannon fodder and kind of debris at that point. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, come on, man. You, you lost your original sights of what you were doing with this thing, but you didn't because it came before everything, but it changed when the war started. I'm very confused what the lore would be on this boat and why we never saw another one. Because Bungie didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> they were leaving. They didn't care. Yeah, so, so, so for me... That is a top quality solid F tier on that gun boat. As we flip the man, we're filling up these pages. I got so many pages on this thing now. All right, we are on page. Is this page page five for these? Page four. Page four. We're on to page four of our notage on it, and we're next up with the Type Fifty Seven Phantom, and this is the Halo Five Guardians edition of it. Uh, so it gets that St. Healy design. It gets to be like more chunky and kind of weird looking. Yeah, spiky. Yeah, spiky. Bug like. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm not giving this an F tier just because it's still used for what it needs to be used for, mm-hmm. but I will give it a D tier. Dear, d- dear. D for sure for me. Yeah. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. It does its purpose. It is just ugly as sin. I agree. But this next, this next one's interesting. The Type 29 Vampire. Mm-hmm. It's a close support fighter in an, an atmospheric anti-air fighter, formerly in the service of the Covenant military. And it's used uh, during the early years of the Human Covenant War. However, its role was eventually overtaken by better armed and more versatile vehicles, leading to it seeing, you know, less and less deployment in the war. We first saw it in Halo Wars. And as close support fighter specializing in ground attack aircrafts with impressive anti-air support capabilities in part due to its speed and maneuverability. And it's really interesting because it's generally crewed by a single pilot, though the aircraft can be operated with the aid of a second pilot, like the Covenant military vehicles. And the cockpit is located towards the rear of it. And really what this is is, is a uh, a flying needler. Yes. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's pretty much taking a better Banshee design, in my mm-hmm. opinion, and and using that needler process of, of whatever magic needles kind of have <laughs> and, and, and using that. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's such a unique vehicle within the Covenant that we don't really see. Dude, it's so cool. It, it's such a neat vehicle. And I would probably give the Vamp an A. Yeah, I'm uh, going with A. I think the design is sleek. I mean, you could, I mean, listen, you're getting all the attention. If you, if, <laughs> here's the thing, you go to the beach. Who are you going to look at? The Banshee Flyer or the Vampire Flyer who like comes <laughs> down, docks, like, hey, how's it going, guys? But the Banshee Flyer, oops, actually opened the cockpit two inches above the sand, breaks both legs. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Vamp's cool. You know, it obviously, I think, gets replaced by the Seraph. I think that's what mm-hmm. they're, I think mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of gone on well, about. it's almost like it's like turned it around. And they're yes. like, <laughs> that's, you know, just fill all that in and that's a Seraph. Yeah. And so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in A. You said uh, A with that as well? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. A. A. I wholeheartedly agree. Mm-hmm. And the next up is the Seraph. Now, the, there was two versions of the Seraph. They didn't. It didn't matter when I was looking at them. Yeah, it was yeah. like lore-wise, one had one other symbol, but they're the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is that tier. We first see it in Halo 2. It's that teardrop-like uh, shape, like I said, the reverse of the vampire that is the staple of kind of Covenant air support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Seraph fighters. Uh, kind of like longsword, broadsword kind of thing. Yeah. And so th- there's a Kai pattern. There's, there's a Mu pattern. Um, so the Kai pattern wields four Tevas, and the Mu pattern has heavy plasma cannons. So that's, that's the mm-hmm. only difference between the two of them. Um, you know, I, I'd probably put this up there with that B tier. You know, this, yeah. this this is a staple. It's very much like the broadsword, um, that B tier. Like, it's not it's not on that passing grade. It's a little bit better. I mean, it was a yeah. staple of the, of, of the Covenant, and I think worked really well. I mean, 
B does not stand for beach on this, so that's where it loses points. <laughs> um, but it definitely does the job it was supposed to do. I'll give it a C. I'm neutral on you it. You We don't encounter it too terribly much, so it's like a lot harder to grade. But that's that's where I, I stand with it. Mm-hmm. But next, we're on to Forerunner vehicles. Well, vehicle, yeah, the, singular. The one and only. Uh, the Z1800 Phaeton. It's an exo-atmospheric multi-role fighter and is a class of a Forerunner weapon ship. Its first appearance was in Halo 5 Guardians, and it's controlled by a single pilot. The Phaeton can teleport short distances rapidly in any direction, and it's also armed with a chin-mounted, twin-linked directed energy weapons, as well as a missile launcher-like weapon on both sides of the fuselage. So, and and, it's like all the other weapons that start, it's like all the other vehicles that start to evolve with Halo. They have a cooldown time, can't Mm -hmm. shoot them too much. But, you know, it's kind of looks like it's built out of Legos. Yes. D. You going D? Going D just because, I, I, again, it does serve a purpose. It just it looks like it's built out of Legos. It has, like, teleportation randomly for whatever which, reason. Which, which I think is perfect. It's an A tier for me. It's an A tier? I think the Phaeton's amazing. Listen, I'm not, I'm not going to agree or disagree with you because you think that the Scarabs are good. So are you, they're S tier. No, oh, they're great. Phaeton's amazing. Like, think of, like, Dead Mouse or someone, like, DJing in the Phaeton. Like, that's, <laughs> that's the ship for them on the beach for it. But I think it's actually a fun vehicle. It's versatile. I think the teleportation aspect that comes over from the foreigners themselves, like the soldiers that can jump around, mm-hmm. I think it was a smart integration. I think the design, because it is mutable, it can kind of transform. They never did it in that series, but it can kind of transform and adapt to its environment. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you're wrong. I'm right. I got to um, disagree with you, my friend. But we will continue on to our final round, which is civilian vehicles. This is this is what this whole episode has been leading up to. It really has. But this is really what I'm, I'm ready for. And we're going to start <laughs> with the UNSC with the AMG Civilian Warthog. So this is like your hog that was first featured in Halo 2 that is the Civi Hog. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it is the M12. That's not a troop transport, but it has no weaponry. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. This heavy-duty off-road vehicle is extremely popular with off-world explorers. Compared to the military version, this is a luxurious automobile with trans-system GPS, omnidirectional, network surround sound, and acoustics oh. dampening feel to cancel out road and engine noises, complete user-specific voice control, a highly efficient long-range power cell, and the capability to drive itself. I'm sold. Uh, if there was a tier above S, it would be there. I'm going to give it an A. Oh, okay. But hey, 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 that's still a very good rating. Uh, I'm going to give it S plus, actually. <laughs> uh, just, just just, for me. I mean, this this is this is the beach vehicle. It, it, that is true. It is I mean, the it's, beach it's got vehicle. top of the line surround sound, noise cancellation. Probably, if you wanted to, take that glove compartment. It's a cool drink tray. It's there. Incredible. Incredible. Now let's move on to the Husiv Genet. And it's a compact, high-volume coupe with several model trims ranging from eco-accessible to track-ready. Uh, like nearly all cars used in New Mombasa and elsewhere on Earth, the Genet includes roadware that allows the car to pilot itself while driving and keeps the car connected to the planet's surveillance grid. First appearance was Halo 3 ODST. I'm going to give it a, a D because it is ugly. You're not wrong. I was, I was going to pull up a picture for you to see. It oh, is... I, I, I know which one exactly. It kind of looks like the Cybertruck if it wasn't as angular. Yeah, it's 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 not it's not the best. Um, well, no, I think you're thinking of a different one. Are you thinking of this one? Yeah, that's one thing. Oh, of. okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely got that futuristic standpoint to it because because there are two versions of it, which I don't know if I've included. I know I've included the 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 Genet. The Fossa is is much cooler. Um, and then the HC fifteen hundred is just a big truck. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the C class. It's it's like a Honda Civic, yeah, of, of futuristic cars. I think it's a nice base model. It gets you around. It probably lasts forever. Yeah, I mean it's lasting through these nukes and stuff going through New Mombasa <laughs> and getting glass. So you know you can't really go wrong with it. Next up, we have the Maglev train, uh, which is the mag the Maglev, which is the magnetically levitated train. Um, get you around the colony worlds. Uh, mm-hmm. We first see in Halo Two, you jump on with Johnson after you get like your tutorial, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, and you start to do your celebration. You know, I I think overall, I think it's pretty good public transit. 
you know, I, I think it does what it has to do. I think it's gonna be a C tier. It's just the baseline of yeah. what has to be on the planet. It's the C for me because it's a neutral opinion. It's just you're in it once and then that's that. So yeah, I mean, in the books we do talk about it a bit more mm -hmm. on, on some of it, um, but I think it, it works effectively. It gets you around the planet. It does so quickly. Um, you know, hopefully we'll get there someday. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's great. Yeah. And next we have the S two Traxxas cargo transporter which is basically a forklift designed by Traxxas Heavy Industries. First appearance is in Halo 3. Not too much to say about it. It is a forklift. So to rate this, because we can drive them in Halo Reach, which Alex had to clarify for me, I'll definitely say A, because it's fun. It was different. I love I love your rating system. If we go back and like hear you, you're like, armaments are it. It has to be well equipped. <laughs> and the Pelican gets a C because it wasn't that great in combat. But forklift, that's an A. I mean, you can drive it. Well, it's a civilian thing. I'm not. You know, I have to judge the civilian vehicles differently than the, I, the no, I, the you, you military don't. vehicles. You don't. It's an S for me. Um, <laughs> let me go back because Jesse, of course, skips one because he does not like this car, which is amazing. It's the MLX. Oh. It is a human luxury sports car. First appearance in Halo 2. It's all those really dumb cars you see around with a small frame. MLX seats only a driver and one passenger. This vehicle has a highly modifiable chassis suspended on two independent suspension axes. Despite the claims of both vehicles' respective manufacturers, the MLX and Uber chassis have similar capabilities, though the MLX is particularly renowned for its high speed and good suspension. How do you feel about the MLX? Again, it's it, this one's neutral for me. I'm gonna give it a C. Yeah, um, I'm not a luxury sports guy. Yeah, a I'm, car I'm, guy. I'm going D. I mean, you don't want that at the beach. Like, <laughs> like you really don't. I, it's, it's just I think it would, I think it would just kind of kill it. But yeah, if, if you want to continue on, I'll have some honorable mentions that we'll talk about at, mm -hmm. at the end that I didn't include, but we can just touch base on. We, it won't be in the final, but just some things that came to mind that I wrote down. Yeah. Um, but continue with our final. So the final one we have is the Uber chassis, also simply known as the UC, and it's a human luxury sports car which seats five. So it's pretty good. I mean, you're going from Ooh. like your, you know, Camaro, your Ferrari to a five seater. That's a that's a sports car apparently. Yeah, yeah. Two I in don't... the front, three in the back, or five in the front and none in the back. <laughs> and it is the quintessential auto experience. Mm. It has widely been held as the standard bearer for sports luxury vehicles. Uh, its first appearance was in Halo 2, and it is popular among Earth and several inner colonies, with many being found in the city of Mimbasa in 2552. Despite the claims of both vehicles' respective manufacturers, the Uber chassis and the MLX have similar capabilities. Mm, like we said. What do you feel on this one? Again, neutral. It's a sports car for me. It's not my thing. It's someone else's thing. C. Give it a B. Give it a B. Five, five people to fit. I was, I was going to ask, is it because it's more people? It's more people. It's the quintessential auto experience. So here's the thing. It's, it's the marketing that's getting me right now. <laughs> it's the quintessential auto experience that is held as the standard bearer for sports luxury. So it's it's a okay, standard. Okay. I'm going to give it a B. Um, you know, I, I think this is where you're going to have more of the pretentious people that try to come to my beach party in that MLX thinking they're better. Or like it's just them and their partner or them by themselves. You know, uh, so I think with this, this is more of like, hey, I picked up my friends. We're coming. Like, I have a bit of money. You know, I work on uh, robot things, um, as you do in Halo Spe Universe. Specific. Uh, big robot things. <laughs> oh, uh, very specific. Thank you. Yeah, so, so that, that's where we're going with it. Now, I want to do some honorable mentions that really didn't have a wiki page or weren't kind of part of it. And they won't be in the final, but I just wanted to kind of like, well, well, well this is like our wind down uh -huh. to kind of get coming to down, it, coming down to it. And the one I want to do is that pilot frame. What was that thing called? Well, they're in space and they have like the frame thing. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, the, the pilot frame, the framey bikey thing that we see in the anime and we see in oh, one the, of the, bo the, booster the booster frame. The, the booster, booster frames, frames, that's it. That's what it is, the booster frame. I was frame. like, the bike? I was like, what the? I thought you meant like a literal bike, and I was oh, like, no, what? No, what, no, are no. We, what are we talking about? The booster frame. It w we didn't really have a wiki on it because it wasn't technically a quote-unquote vehicle, but I wanted to get your opinion. Where would you rate that? Like, let's discuss it a bit. Let's, let's let the audience know if they don't know what it is. Uh, it's it's essentially like, as you said, like a bike. Uh, it kind of looks like a, a T. It's, I think it's kind of like a stripped down short sword. Yeah. And like, like, like a very, it's like, it's like he already went through the chop shop and the mm -hmm. junkyard 
and salvage, and this yeah. is what you get. And it was made specifically for that mission in Halo Legends. Uh, I'm going to give it a C, and that's because the design is absolutely horrid, and we don't really see it again. And I think, why do we need those little things? Yeah, I think, well, we do see it a couple times, not just there. We also see it in the uh, Kilo 5 trilogy. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah so we see it in the Kilo 5 trilogy as well. Um, you know, I, I would give it a B just because, yeah, the, the design's not great, but it wasn't meant to be. It was meant to be yeah. shielded and inconspicuous as space debris. That's mm -hmm. kind of what the design aspect of it was. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, B for that. I mean, it's almost, if you brought that to like a worldly plane, if you brought that down, <laughs> worldly plane, if you brought that down to, uh, you know, gravitational pulls, this is what I'm going to call the earth from now on, worldly frames, gravitational pulls, if you bring it down to the beach. It's kind of like uh, those speeders from Star Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might be kind of cool to zoom around the beach in them. Until you hit something and die. Well, you know, that's a risk you take. Risk reward. Exactly. It's always there. That's the beach experience. Risk <laughs> reward. So, yeah, I had that one. Um, you know, then we had the civilian transport kind of hogs on Reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, that first mission, it's not a hog, but it's kind of a pickup. That, like, you have George jump in the back. Yeah, yeah, that truck, yeah. essentially, that they, they you know, they just used, they just, like, reskinned a warthog as much as they could. Yep. Uh, I mean, other than if you didn't have George, it's just a truck. Mm -hmm. So, see. Yeah, I think it does what it has to do. I think George, yeah. I think George is breaking suspensions all over the place, and I think that's <laughs> a shame. Uh, but, yeah, I, I agree with that, um, you know, because I know that, like, within Reach, especially Reach, and, and a little bit in, in ODST, you get some vehicles that are a little different that we see. Mm -hmm. um, I included a couple of them, but there's just so many of those, like, just civvy vehicles that didn't yeah. have anything about them, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't include turrets, like the shade turret or anything. It, it wasn't a vehicle, in my opinion. No, it's a stationary turret. Yeah, and it, it, it would have got an F tier anyway. It doesn't do anything. But yeah, I mean, I mean, let us know what you think. I'm, I'm going to be posting um, on our YouTube and other links and, and on our social. We will have the link to our tier list that I made on Tier List Maker. I want to I see your guys. Share, share them on social. Send them to us on Discord, things like that. Um, let us know your criteria. Let us know if you did a beach going one, um, you know, one that could transport the most amount of apples in a day. Um, you know, <laughs> anything that's silly out there or, or, or your serious one that's based on armaments, usefulness in the Halo universe. You know, let, yeah. us, let us know because I know Jesse kind of went that route a little bit more than me. You know, I went a random route for cup holders, <laughs> from cup holders to Rules beach going. Rules just kind of just came and went. Yeah, but it's, it's fun. I, I like doing the experience because otherwise mm. I could rate these seriously for you, but everyone would have kind of the same and then it would be more of a like just a debate, a very yeah. serious like, well, no, 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 the firepower. Because 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 yeah, the scarab would be really high up there because it just yeah. eliminates everything. But you know, on me, design aspect, beach going, and just the silliness <laughs> of some of the designs, kind of where I chose it from. So yeah, let us know what you think. Um, like I said, we'll be posting if you haven't seen it already. We'll have it on our social. Uh, we'll have both of our tier lists. Um, and I'll have beach going as the title. Jesse will have somewhat serious as the title um, <laughs> so that we can kind of see how those work and let us debate. Like, let us know what you think. Um, you know, are are we way off the mark? Should we have put... Which obviously, no. No, we're not at all. But should we have put something much higher, much lower? Or do you agree with our neutralness on some of them? So, yeah. Because yeah, just... it's hard to have an opinion on every single one. Oh, no, it's, it's easy when you go beach going experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that was... Bonus episode number 17, us ranking all of the vehicles in the Halo universe. What a task it was. Yeah, but, it was it was fun. I had a good time. But we got through it. Listen, we did it together. Together, all of us, including our patrons. Yeah, yeah. And whether you liked or hated this episode or what our coverage was, our patrons were the ones who voted on this, so you can blame them or thank them. Whether you shake their hand or slap it away, hey, it's your call. But we're going to thank them today with this rhyme scheme that I just did. <laughs> we have Charles Zitter, Tactics, Skyjack, Harvey Chong, Brendan Reshtar, Anger Canadian, ZZ Slipaway, Grant Dillon, Dust Storm, Mr. Chof, Cowan Fung Feliciano, Dragonfire, James Yervasi, Jonas, D Gamer 1298, Alex Harper, Dilfix, Quantum Easy, That LL Gamer Guy, Jamie Sneed, McCray Austin, Mega, Thomas Goulding, Nick Hyman, Tuna0317, Brandon Christian, Richard Scanlon, Mick Chief, Big Papa Semichki, Grant ODST, Loki2014, Nathan Vandervoort, Climbing Spork, and 
1898. So if you haven't heard, you probably have. But on our Patreon, we have a lot of cool stuff like this, bonus mm-hmm. episodes, post shows, merch, exclusive downloads of notes and, and other things and and other, you know, questions you might have or reach out. So, you know, we, we contact you directly through a lot of mm-hmm. that Patreon Discord that we do have. So you get a lot of behind the scenes things. Um, and we're going to have some shifts with it coming up. Um, so if you have any questions, reach out to us on social. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the good ones. Yeah, like said, give us a like or a follow. Shoot us a message on there if you have any questions. As well as, you know, the, the link will be in the description of this episode or the uh, link in the bio for any of our social. You can join our Discord as well where you can also ask us any questions. And additionally, uh, just be part of this great growing community. Mm-hmm. But it, it's been awesome so far, so please join that. It's free for any and all. Our, our patrons do get their own little Discord chat, which is a little fun thing in and mm-hmm. of itself. But as well as, you know, if you want to listen to us on SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts, anything like that. We are, AM radio. We are available. Yes, AM radio. We Final are, pressings. We are available on all of those. If for whatever reason you find out we're not on a podcast platform, let us know. We'll get on there for you. Or not, if it's terrible. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, that was bonus episode 17. Ranking the vehicles of Halo. I am your host, Jesse Reiners. And I am your host, Alex Kendall. And thank you for tuning in to Finish the Fight, a Halo podcast. Halo, it's finished. No, I think we're just getting started.
finished. No. I think we're just getting started.